North Dakota State started off Missouri Valley play with a bang, outlasting a conference rival to stay unbeaten. But another longtime nemesis is prowling, ready to give the Bison its best shot on its home turf. It's North Dakota State in Northern Iowa, and it's coming up next on the KBOI Camp where our Bison Network. Get your horns out! Tailgating in the parking lot. Now that clock is ticking down. The boys are ready to go. The energy in here's electric. Let's get on with the show. Get your horns up. The queen and gold are back in town. Get your horns up. Hold up and ready to throw down. Toss that corn up in the air. Bring the boys up to the line. Hold your horns up high because it's rising time. Hello and welcome to the Unidome in Cedar Falls, Iowa for North Dakota State football here on the KBLY KFYR Bison Television Network. North Dakota State and Northern Iowa has been a great rivalry over the years. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday afternoon. Brian Sean, Lee Timmerman with you. We'll have the call for this afternoon's matchup. Ryan Geller will join us on the sidelines. And LT, a lot of memorable matchups between these two programs over the years. Two years ago here in Cedar Falls came down to the bitter end. But NDSU has won seven of the last eight matchups in this series. The lone one they did lose was back in 2014. Yeah, and that was a dominant uh, effort. David Johnson, Xavier Williams played in that particular game. They're not here anymore. <laughs> but uh, I go back to a game just a few years ago in this rivalry with Carson Wentz and Darius Shepard. 35 seconds left when uh, Wentz hit Shepard in the corner of the end zone. That game, of course, was at the Fargo Dome. But again, it illustrates how tight these games have been in this rivalry. Both teams' defensive lines like to get after the quarterback, in particular the defensive ends. We'll see two of the better guys today in Greg Menard and Ricky Neal. That's going to be interesting to watch to see how, how each team's offensive tackles handle that today. And that and if those offensive tackles need help. If they need help, there's a better chance of a blitzer to try to sneak on through. That's true for both sides of the ball. And, and another thing, too, I think on that, that hard style that you and I tries to push upfield, look for Easton Stick maybe to take advantage of that maybe in the run game with some seams opening up for him uh, on the ground. Two of these teams also take a lot of pride in being physical up front on the offensive line. Both teams very good up front. North Dakota State maybe a little bit more of an advantage, but it's going to be interesting to see which team can actually control the line of scrimmage and run the ball today. If you and I cannot run the ball, well, then Eli Dunn's probably going to get beat up as bad as he has the last couple of times that he has played against NDSU. Uh, that's the main thing. If, if you and I can't run, Dunn is probably in trouble again. Chris Kleiman of the Bison on the field here at the Unidome on Sheriff Field. On a dreary Saturday here in Cedar Falls. A lot of rain nice falling out inside. here in Iowa this weekend. Yeah, it's certainly nice to be inside, and it's really nice to see. I know the guys talked about it a little bit in the pregame show, but the new turf here at the Uni Dome, that's one of the new things that uh, has been done into this building that's been hosting events since 1976. Yeah, and to elaborate on that a little bit, LT, it is not like the turf at the Fargo Dome. It is more like the Astro Turf we saw in the Dome maybe four or five years ago before the field turf was installed. Yeah, it, with more cushion, though, it, it is more... Uh, it's not quite as hard when you hit it as it was in some of that old turf. But, yeah, it is, it is not a field turf that has the individual fibers with the rubber down in it. Bison's first road game, the latest time the Bison have started on the road since 1961. Four straight road uh, home games to start for NDSU and now back-to-back -back roadies here at UNI and then Western Illinois next weekend. There's a look at Easton Stick, and there's the hometown boy, Lance Dunn. Went to nearby Waterloo West High School, had a tremendous career there. His cousin and former teammate at Waterloo West, Blake Thomas, is an outside linebacker for the Panthers. Lance, even though he missed all those games last year, still with 2,413 career yards in a Bison uniform, 24 touchdowns, averaging in his career over six yards a carry. He wants more of the same today. The Bison are short a little bit on running backs today. Only four traveled with the team. Ty Brooks back in Fargo has an injury issue, sustained that last week against South Dakota State, could not get it healthy enough 
to play out here today. So Sabian Clark is the fourth running back, the true freshman out of Sioux City. And I know as, as uh, Ryan mentioned in the pregame show, it's a little odd to see as many tailbacks in that position group as you have quarterbacks with you on the road, four in each. We we're kind of wondering how North Dakota State was going to handle this road trip. Again, you can dress 64, but you can travel 70. And all four quarterbacks, as you mentioned, did travel, including Trey Lance. And one other name I saw on the travel list that was interesting, LT, is Mark Stump. Oh, yeah. Linebacker well, from Bismarck. And, and Mark played quite a bit in uh, mop-up duty, if you want to call it that, in those first couple of games of the year. But one thing that helps when you're on the road, and that is veterans. And the Bison uh, have some, a lot of veterans on this team, especially on the defensive side. Uh, there's Easton Sick, a senior on the offensive side. But one of the things I, I just did when you start looking through numbers is of the starters, quote unquote starters, on the two deep on the defensive side, 407 college games played with those 11 individuals. And that is a tremendous amount of experience on a unit. The 52nd meeting all time between these two programs as well. That does go back to Division two days a little bit before you and I moved up to FCS. And would you believe it? 26-25, you and I with the advantage. So the Bison could even up the series at 26 apiece with a victory here in Cedar Falls today. Well, when the Bison first made the move, the idea to go Division I, uh, one of the, uh, the, I don't know if it's a blueprint, but one of the teams and programs you looked at to try to get to that level was the Panthers right here, you and I, because Coach Farley had some things rolling uh, really well at that particular time in terms of, of where you recruited, who you recruited, and the, the, the type of athlete that it takes to be successful in the Division I level. Uh, that's what the Panthers had. That's what the Bison strive for. And now NDSU obviously has taken that a massive step, maybe six steps farther than you and I have. If you get I, I picked up your drift there, okay. LZ. You and I have played in one national championship game, but they do not have any national titles. The last conference championship for Northern Iowa back in 2011. And the issue will kick off first. Cam Peterson to put the boot to it. Deion McShane back deep. For Northern Iowa, along with Xavier Williams. Be curious to see how the Panthers come out offensively. Certainly Trevor Allen has been the more productive running back, but Wy Miller is still getting a lot of carries. Number eight, the senior out of a walk on with you know, uh, Iowa. Wy Miller's just looked a little bit slower this year yeah. for, for some reason. Nobody's really had an answer for that when you ask that question. Uh, but the one thing Wy Miller has done a lot, not, uh, not successfully well against NDSU, but in that Wildcat position, I think we'll see him maybe in some Wildcat today. About set to get things started on this first Saturday of October in 2018. NDSU 4-0, the Panthers 2-2. Two two. Northern Iowa did get a couple of extra days off playing last Thursday against Indiana State, shutting out the Sycamores 33 to nothing. There's a look at Farley. Another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Peterson boots it away, and we are underway here in Cedar Falls. Fair catch called for and made by Williams, and you and I will start at the 25-yard line. Let's take a look at the NDSU starting lineup with the defense. Caleb Butler, Blaine, Minnesota. Blake Williams, Romeo, Michigan. Aaron Seidel, Carlos, Minnesota. Greg Menard, Lakeville, Minnesota. Levi Jordan, Dickinson, North Dakota. Dan Marlette, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Jabril Cox, Kansas City, Missouri. Jalen Allison, Papillion, Nebraska. Rob Grimsley, Hutchinson, Minnesota. James Hendricks, Bemidji, Minnesota. Marquise Bridges, Minneapolis, Minnesota. First play is a run. Y Miller picks up a few. Head to the 28-yard line. Aaron Steidel there for the tackle for NDSU. Panthers look like they'll go with a little bit of a hurry up here. We'll show some up tempo. There's a look at Eli Dunn, starting quarterback. Numbers brought to you by the North Dakota Beef Commission. Five touchdowns, just one pick, but he has been hit and has made some mistakes in the past against the Bison. And there's Wymiller finding a hole. 
stepped out of the tackle from Blake Williams until Ron Grimsley makes the stop. First down, Northern Iowa at the 36. Dunn has been very inconsistent already this year. There's been games where he has been pulled, and then he, he, he didn't start against Iowa, and then he played fairly well toward the end of that game. He played horrible in the first half against Montana. Dunn across the middle. Wide open. for a touchdown. When plays like these happen, you have to look for the safety. Where was the safety? I think we're going to see Robbie Grimsley playing run. Boy, that kid's had a great start to the year, too. Riley Moore. First team All-Valley. Preseason selection. His third touchdown reception of the season. Austin Aritham on for the extra point and just 56 seconds in. Northern Iowa marches down the field. Okay, our Nodak Insurance Company replay. Watch number five. Grimsley, he kind of sucked up. Nobody with the check at, at all on Moore. And the leading receiver for the Panthers. Adds a touchdown on his first check. There's a perfect look at it from behind on that angle. You'll see that uh, no one was watching more. Marlette's trying to catch up to him. There's no way he will. Jalen Allison can't get back there. The other safety, Hendricks, is nowhere to be found. Well-designed play, well-executed play. Panthers saw something and took advantage of it. So a quick strike for you and I. Just the opposite of what NDSU would want to have happen when one of your things to do is try to quiet the hometown crowd. You can't be more excited in this building if you're wearing purple than a start like that. And for Eli Dunn. We'll step aside and be back with more after this. A look at Easton Stick, Darius Shepard, and the Bison offense will try to answer after you and I connects on a big pass play, 64 yards from Dunn to Briley Moore. Austin Aritham boots it towards the corner to Bruce Anderson, and he will take a knee. And NDSU will start at the 25-yard line. Let's take a look at the North Dakota State starting lineup on the offensive side. Brought to you by Shields. Easton Stick, Omaha, Nebraska. Dylan Radins, Becker, Minnesota. Colin Connor, Mineral Point, Wisconsin. Tanner Holson, Balfour, North Dakota. Luke Bacon, Gamble, North Dakota. Zach Johnson, Blaine, Minnesota. Ben Ellison, Holly, Minnesota. Brock Robbins, Cavalier, North Dakota. Bruce Anderson, Tampa, Florida. Dallas Freeman, St. Michael, Minnesota. Darius Shepard, Blue Springs, Missouri. Stick out of the shotgun. Hand off up the middle. Bruce Anderson gains good yardage on first down across the 30 yard line. Duncan Furch, middle linebacker, a lot of experience. He's one of the captains. Also, had a 19-yard touchdown on a deflection last week. Furch did on an interception. There's a look at Easton Sticks' numbers so far this season. Brought to you by the North Dakota Beef Commission. His first interception of the season last week against South Dakota State. Starting today, just about 1,200 yards shy of Brock Jensen for most yardage and total offense in a career at North Dakota State. Stick will roll out. Fires on the run, and there to make the catch is Darius Shepard. Shepard coming off a big game as well. That's a first down up to the 44. Five receptions, 118 yards, a career high for the senior out of Blue Springs, Missouri. Let's take a look at the defensive unit for you and I, brought to you by Shields. We talked about Furch. Maybe the biggest surprise is Chris Kalarvik, leading tackler for Northern Iowa, just a redshirt freshman. There has been a little bit of shifting in the back end between Corby Sander 
and some other guys. A.J. Allen will play a lot in the secondary as well. Sanders still listed as a safety, playing kind of a nickel linebacker role. Anderson bouncing outside. Great room for Bruce. Takes a host of Panthers to bring him down. 13 yards on that pickup inside UNI territory to the 43. Well, a run play and then a pass play that was very effective. A deep out, and now we go back on the Nodak Insurance Company replay back to a run play. Get a real good block on the edge. Uh, that was done by Brock Robbins. You also saw Tanner Bolson in there. And then trying to work back into the field. If you can make cornerbacks have to tackle, be first people there, you're doing well in the run game. High formation. First and ten. Lance Dunn, his first carry. He went over 100 yards, and his last time he played in this building. Where the Bison offensive line is getting off the ball very well. Again, uh, the center, Tanner Bolson, was there. Luke Bacon, the right guard, with a real good push. And that big man in the middle there, Bryce Douglas, is one of the guys that they're pushing around. Douglas. Over 300 pounds, Hezekiah Applegate, the nose is at 285, but so far the interior three are beating the interior two of the Panthers. Twin tailbacks next to Stick here. Stick running out of time, and now he's going to throw it up and out of bounds. Avoiding a sack that time as Ricky Neal and Seth Thomas put the pressure on. So third and six, third and seven coming up. Usually when the pressure comes, it is coming from the outside with these uh, Panthers, especially Neal led the Missouri Valley Conference in sacks last year. First team All-Valley preseason. The no. first, sorry, Brian, the first big test for the Bison offense here on third down. Crowd coming to life. Bring pressure. That pass deflected. Incomplete. Dallas Freeman, the intended target, and the issue will have to punt it away. Stick is going back to the boundary side because he had the one-on-one. -on -one. He had the matchup he wanted. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Birch. Birch. The linebacker gets his hand up, but the, but the 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 safety moved to a single high. Safety, so that means you're outside, especially on the boundary with nobody behind there. Stick made the right, right read, he just couldn't get the ball out. Here, Wagner will try to pin the Panthers deep. Williams calls for the fair catch, takes a bias and hop at the five, and then downed by Caleb Butler at about the eight yard line. Well done, and we will step aside again. You and I with a 7 0 lead, and they have the football back thrown eight yard line when we come back. Back to live action here. And Trevor Allen picked up a couple of yards on that carry for you and I. First time we saw jet motion on the first down play as well. That is a very familiar pre-snap movement for this you and I offense. More motion into the backfield. Stepping out of a tackle was Lye Miller, and he was able to get a few to bring up third and five. Show your buys and pride today with an NDSU Gate City Bank ATM and check card. Visit gatecity.bank slash my card. Gate City Bank for a better way of life, member FDIC. Quickly done throwing it out to Lye Miller. He lunges for the first down as Grimsley came up to make the tackle, and he's got enough. Levi Jordheim came on a blitz on the outside from the field side, the short side. And then Dunn was just able to flip it where, basically where Levi wasn't. And then a nice uh, job of stretching it for that first down. We saw how important that third down stat was last week. It'll be again this week. Well, they may stop and take a look at this. Just to make sure he got there. The of the spot. Nothing. Also, one thing that's a little different as well for watching at home is we watch it on the Nodak Insurance Company replay. 
is that we, our station, the signal you're watching right now is not the signal that the replay officials are using. It is the Panther Sports Network that also televises the game here, which is the, the replay cameras. You saw Grimsley on that one-on-one -on -one tackle. And, and once again, Robbie started deep in the box, so he squares him up. I think he's got enough. In the stretch. I don't think there's enough there, certainly to show if he's down beforehand. Rolling on the field, stand. Yeah. First down for Northern Iowa. So good effort there by Y. Miller, the senior. 20 carries, 90 yards against Indiana State last weekend. It's a guy that carried the ball 42 times last year against South Dakota State in his first career start at tailback. Silver Allen now to tailback here on first and ten. Somebody moved early, I think, on the left side. May have been Cal Twait or possibly Jackson Scott Brown. Those two have been the best two, without a doubt, offensive linemen. We'll start offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty, first down. Scott Brown was the guilty party there. 24 starts on the O-line for the junior out of Council Bluffs, Iowa. And the guy right to his left, which is 75, that's Cal Twait. He was a guy, NDSU, at left tackle, recruited real heavily. Done. Setting up the screen to Allen has some blockers in front. And Allen's got enough for a first down. Or close to it, right at the sticks. Pick up a close to 15. Might be about a half yard short based on where they're parking it right now. Allen is certainly a pass receiving threat. Let's take a look at the UNI offense. Starting lineup brought to you by Shields. LT talked about Scott Brown its way. Nick Ellis, we have not seen him, I believe, out there yet today. Jalen Rima, Jalen James, the two receivers. McShane is a true freshman out of Freeport, Illinois. Done to throw. Downfield, James is open in the middle of the field. He's hit by Robbie Grimsley. But a pickup of 14, maybe 15 yards up to the 43. And again, you and I will try to go quick after a big play. As soon as the chance will set, Nodak Insurance Company replay. Watch the back end of this in terms of the hit. Grimsley again, we've seen him be able to come up and pop people, but not until after James makes the catch. You and I has found something on the field side, the short side. A lot of productive plays coming to the offense's left. Allen, delayed handoff. Marlette. Coming up from his middle linebacker spot to make the tackle after a gain of four. Absolutely critical that Marlette makes tackles like that. When there's nobody on him, the defensive line's job is to keep the linebackers free. The Bison were free on that play. Marlette was able to flow off to his right, the play side. He must make that tackle, and he did. If he doesn't, it's another first down. Dunn going to keep it this time as he slides down short of the first down. Here comes a flag. Hit a little bit late as he went to the ground. And this might go against North Dakota State for a personal foul. I think they might also be looking at flag a potential down. target. There's a little extra talk between the head linesman. You see it there and the man in the white hat in charge of the officiating crew. And that's a little unusual because Dunn is not a running quarterback. So the RPOs that the Panthers run are usually designed for him to either hand off or pass it. He, he does not keep it much. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense, number six. 15-yard penalty added at the end of the run. First down. So that will go on James Hendricks. Let's take a look. The Nodak Insurance Company replay. He's sliding down. Boy, I don't know That's about that. That's a terrible call. That's an awful football call on the field. He wasn't even on the turf yet, LT. No, he wasn't down. He, he, he didn't even slide yet. And I was afraid they were going to make it worse, actually, by looking at targeting. I didn't see a lead with a helmet, but nope, that was a poor one. Break for you and I inside Bison territory at the 41. Dunn stepping up across the middle again. Jalen Rimmel with the reception. Inside the Bison 10 down to the 8-yard line. 
So far, pass protection holding up here for the Panthers. That's the key to the whole thing right there. Watch how he Dunn is able to climb the pocket. One, two, three steps up before he throws it and hits it. Hits Rima right on the, on the numbers. And the Panthers started this drive way back inside their 10. And now they're inside the Bison 10. Wymiller bouncing it out, stepping out of a couple of tackles. Touchdown. Again, we were told a little bit that Y. Miller was just seemed slower this year for some reason. Well, maybe the adrenaline of playing the Bison, that is not the case here. Y. Miller is able to get around Bridges on the outside, so there is no contain. It's Marquise Bridges' job to make sure that doesn't get wide of him. It got wide of him, and the Panthers put six more points on the board. That was an impressive drive. 92 yards. Ayrtham knocks through the extra point and the Bison down 14 early. We'll step aside. Be back for more here at Cedar Falls. Uh, Chris Kleiman. Having some chats probably with his defensive coaches trying to figure out what adjustments need to be made in here by the Bison as you and I jumped out to a 14 nothing lead on the Ag Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard 735 to go in the first quarter. If nothing else the Bison offense has to stay on the field here for a while. Aritham boots this one down taken at the 10 yard line. Big hit at the 23. Coming in to make that stop for Northern Iowa was Alfonso Lambert, linebacker. You can hear this one. Shoulder pads hitting shoulder pads. And that's how you stop a runner in his tracks. So Easton sticking the buys and offense back to work here. Down two scores. To the ground game. Anderson keeps the feet moving. Finally pushed back. After a gain of six, Corby Sander, Xavier Williams, among others in there. Let's take a look at the Bobcat scoring recap. Nine plays, 92 yards as Wymiller takes it in from eight yards out in just four minutes. And so far today, Eli Dunn five of five for 127 yards and all five of his pass attempts to five different receivers today. And the touchdown, the first touchdown via the pass as well. Stick across the middle, Shepard makes the reception. He's bumped down on the play by Williams. But Shepard's got enough for a first down up to the Bison 47. Combo, pretty sweet combo uh, pass route here in your Nodak Insurance Company replay. See Jensen kind of clearing out, try to influence the safety a little bit. Williams trailing the play as Shepard is able to get it back up to midfield. That's how you try to move the eyes of the defensive backs and throw behind it. 19 yards on that game. Now handoff to Shepard on the outside. Duncan Furch, initial contact. Eight more on that carry for Shepard. Well, Chris Kleiman mentioning in his press conference earlier this week, we got to find a way to continue to get the ball to number 20. Very consistent playmaker. Well, he was huge last week in the win over South Dakota State. Play action for Stick. Firing downfield and under through that one just a little bit. Again, looking for Shepard. Just a two-man route that time for NDSU. 
taking Dallas Freeman and running him on a go a vertical go all just run as deep as you can you hope to bring the safety with you he did a little bit but that's A.J. Allen who has played a lot of safety kind of moved to what Coach Farley's always called his rover position it's a hybrid kind of outside linebacker slash strong safety position. He was in pretty good. It was a that was a tough place to try to get the ball in there. Stick couldn't do it. Now it's third. Stick has time now flushed out. Now firing to the sideline, and that one is just out of the reach of Phoenix Sproles at the 23. And the drive stalls out for the Bison once again in UNI territory. Pass just sailed a little bit wide, but Sproles was running again. Another deep pattern almost looked like a go, but as soon as uh, Stick started scrambling, Sproles worked his way back to try to give him his quarterback an opportunity to hit him, but the ball was not quite in a catchable position. Garrett Wagner back out for his second punt. End over end punt. Williams calling for the fair catch inside his own 10 and makes the fair catch at the five. So you and I will have the football once again deep in its own territory. Boy, Wegner, this is a guy that probably has not been talked about enough. He's done a tremendous job as the first year as a starter, as the punter. Buying, building, or refinancing. Start with a Gate City Bank Blue Standard pre-approval and experience a better home loan. Get started today at GateCity.Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Seems like the Panthers have been working away from where Robbie Grimsley is lined up. Now Grimsley is the safety out about by the 10. More room up the middle for Wymiller. Gain of six to the 12 yard line. Jabril Cox coming in to make the tackle. Cox moves a long way in a short amount of time to get there because the play is not on his side. He sees the handoff back to Y Miller and has to go across the formation and, and, and able to make that tackle. Athletic play. Y Miller again stumbles ahead for a first down to the 16. And again, the Panthers so far this year have been a heavy run left team. Where are a lot of these rushing yards coming from? Where did Y Miller just pick up that first down? Again, it's behind Cal Twait and Jackson Scott Brown, along with Zerbeck, the center, obviously, who helps out. But those two main guys, the senior and the junior on the left side, have played very well this, so far this year. Done. Trying to find his tight end more across the formation, but Jalen Wimbush had that well covered, and Dunn just throws it away. Yeah, he just spikes that thing into the turf. That's the type of play that he may not have made a couple of years ago as a sophomore. He tried, he might have tried to force it in there, but as you mature as a quarterback, some sometimes plays just aren't working. You get rid of it. Call the next one. Four receivers. Flag as done. Trying to set up a little bit of a flanker screen to Dion McShane incomplete. We'll see what the flag is. I thought I saw Spencer Brown come out of his come out a little early or unless the outside wasn't covered unless Brown wasn't covered. Uh, that's what I thought. I thought it was 76. On the offense, five in the backfield, number 76 was lined up as a back. That penalty is declined. Third down. Now good catch there, LT. Number 76, Spencer Brown. Lined up a little bit too far back. And Brown is a guy that started the first five games last year until a season-ending injury. He's a big boy, 6'8", 290. There is size along that offensive line. That's one thing the Panthers have. They have very good size up front. Third and ten. Dunn throwing it up towards the sideline. And Dunn had a rush that throw incomplete, and the Bison defense comes up with a stand here and should get pretty good field position coming back. I think Tuska was the one closest to him, but it did look like Dunn had a little happy feet on that particular play. He did not 
put his back foot into the turf like he meant it. See it? See how it jumps around like that? Marlett also there to get a little bit of a hit on. But that was not a quarterback setting up with the confidence to be able to complete a pass. May go back again to the fact that the last two years NDSU has hit him a lot. Especially in those third and longs, LT. That's where he <laughs> was really beat. Fair catch made by Darius Shepard. Interesting punting situation right now for Northern Iowa. The normal punter Michael Koontz was injured earlier in the season, so they actually have a defensive back right now by the name of Zach Kibbe that has had to take over their duties. He's actually done a pretty good job. That's obviously one of those deals when you have somebody like with his athletic ability, you get recruited as a defensive back. He probably did it for four years in high school, and so it's not totally foreign to him. But it'll be interesting here now. This is the Bison won the field position battle. Last time they didn't after the, the good punt. The Panthers had a 92 yard drive. Now NDSU takes over 55 yards away from a touchdown. Anderson taken down by Furch after a gain of close to five right near midfield. The one thing you don't really get to see or feel much is the interior physical pounding that is going on. We just saw Zach Johnson go out. He, he had a left ankle that he's been battling. He, he even moved out on that particular play and the Bison uh, brought a new guy in. But the in, inside stuff, these guys and these teams, they pound each other. It is physical. Anderson, big hole again. It does close quickly. He should have enough for a first down inside UNI territory. Now the official on the near side is marking him a little bit short. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Nice little job on the outside to take care of the defensive end. And I thought that was Luke Bacon that pulled up in there. Cordell Bolson, by the way, is the guy who came in. On the issue, has had three third down opportunities now inside UNI territory. They've yet to convert one. Anderson gets what he needs across the 45 down to the 44 yard line. The Bison are moving the sticks. Let's talk just a little bit about how important a guy that Cordell Bolson is for NDSU. He wears number 67. He's listed as the backup at left tackle. Well, we just saw him go in. He's playing right tackle. He also knows the guard positions. And so that guy, Cordell Bolson, the sophomore from Balfour, is his brother playing right next to him as center, or two spots over at center. Knowing all those positions, key. Lance Dunn tiptoes through a hole. Is eventually taken down after a four yard gain by Bryce Douglas. One thing Chris Kleiman mentioned earlier this week avoiding negative plays, and so far the Bison are getting pretty good chunks on first down. They certainly are, and that was a beautiful block uh, by Garrett Malstrom, the fullback on that play. He's the junior from Fergus, or from uh, Fergus, Minnesota, and his job is almost to be like uh, another guard. He led, squashed the linebacker. Got about four or five yards on that play. Dunn following a Brock Robbins block and a big pickup there on second down as Dunn gets down to the 22 yard line. The North Dakota State ground game coming alive here on this drive. A.J. Allen making the tackle. Well, when you punch the gut a few times, that allows the outside to open up. And Robbins is just looking for someone to hit. He didn't really have anybody to block because it was so. It was done so well on the outside. Beautiful block by the tight end. Bison getting it done on the ground. Houston Stick changing things up here. Seven on the play clock. High snap. Done again. Not as much room this time. Swallowed up in the middle. Picks up two to the 20. In my weekly conversation with Randy Hedberg, he, he said uh, in the run game this week, we have a lot of maybes. 
you line up you wait for Easton stick to see what he sees and then you maybe run this you maybe run this you maybe run this so breaking the huddle a lot in the run game today it's a play that's not predetermined stick has to read it and then determine where to go with the ball on the ground. Stick to throw across the middle Shepard wide open touchdown. Big finish to that drive for the Bison. Javon Brecky he's a true freshman. He just got taught a lesson. He was toasted there on that pass route by Shepard. See Brecky running down the, the again. With the success in the ground game, you help open up the pass game. Shepard takes a big hit right at the goal line, but the Bison get a much needed touchdown. Peterson with the extra points. It is good. And North Dakota State, a big answer here to end the first quarter. 35 seconds left. It's 14 7. Bison as Shepard with the touchdown. That's one thing Darius Shepard has been real good at since he's been catching passes here at NDSU. He, once he gets the ball in his hands, you don't dislodge it much many times. He, he is uh, very secure with the fact uh, after he makes the catch. Now just about 180 yards behind Big Tech's Warren Holloway for sixth all time on the NDSU all time receiving list. He did go over 2000 career yards last Saturday against South Dakota State. And I know the touchdown and that that'll be part of the highlights uh, the package throughout the course of the after this game and whatever but it's a touchdown pass but the Bison on the ground did some beautiful things in the run game. A couple of really nice things in the a gap and obviously that that big run from the outside and issue tried earlier with a little bit of a jet so they're showing some different things in the run game that is over the course of this contest if if that doesn't change from a you and I standpoint. Bison are going to have some big time yards on the ground. Well, both offenses having success here in the first quarter. You and I 167 yards already. NDSU at 124. See if both defenses adjust here as we go throughout. Peterson. Booting it away. Another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kickoff your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Williams will again take an E and you and I will start at the 25. Let's go downstairs to the third member of our broadcast team, Ryan Gellin. Hey guys, just a quick preview of what's to come in this football game. There is a former Bison football player who is really giving back in a unique way. And we'll explain that unique way and we'll talk about it later this week on the coaches show. But we'll have an interview with a former Bison who is really giving back to this football team. I'll leave you with that, guys. I know who that is. Thank you, Ryan. First International Bank and Trust sideline report. Eli Dunn. So far, so good. Five of eight, 127 yards. Allen hesitates against stepping out of some tackles. Greg Menard finally ripped his helmet off and brought him to the ground after a gain of nine. Jabril Cox got caught a little bit too far inside. Pre snap movement was to the back of the defensive end and then his first movements inside you see number 42 couldn't make the read back get in front of Allen first down second. No, sorry second down second and short why Miller has enough for a first down as he is tripped up by Marlette gain of four that should be the final play of the first quarter unless you and I hustles the clock does stop and now they wind it up. Thank you and I content to let the first quarter run out and we will step aside eventful first 15 minutes here in Cedar Falls at the Unidome 14 7 Northern Iowa on the Egg Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard back with the second quarter after this timeout. Fourteen seven Northern Iowa leads it and ESU coming back with a touchdown at the end of the first quarter you and I set up at the 38 first and 10. 
Lima motions to the backfield. Dunn protected again. Downfield. And it's intercepted. That ball fluttered and it's picked off by Marquise Bridges. He takes it back in you and I territory. Down to the 33. I think Dunn felt the pressure and he was hit. The ball just hung in the air a little bit. Dunn's going to get hit. And then Marquise is able to jump in front of that and do the one thing that the Bison have been able to do on Dunn the last couple of years, and that's get him to turn the ball over on the interception. Levi Jordheim helps finish the, the shot, and it was Menard who was first there. First interception this season for Marquise Bridges, his last INT in Frisco, Texas, earlier this year against James Madison. So the Bison set up on a short field, an opportunity to tie the game here as we just start the second quarter of play. Anderson again run to the outside, to the 20. Bruce inside the 10, down to the seven yard line. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Ben Ellison takes care of Ricky Neal, who often runs those plays down from behind. So Ellison does not allow the quick Ricky Neal to get the play from behind. And Bison are in scoring position right now. Colin Connor also took his guy about 10 yards upfield on that play from his guard position. First and goal. Cut up inside for Anderson across the five. Down to the 40 yard line. There's some hitting going on in the trenches. Uh, I talked about it in that first quarter. The, the, the interiors of these two teams are really getting after it physically. Bacon with the block. Furch is the first guy there to try to cut Dunn down. And then you see behind the play another Bison grinding someone into the turf. Ben Ellison has been a popular target in the red zone here in the last couple of weeks. Stick out of the shotgun. Anderson taken down immediately at the line of scrimmage for no gain. A.J. Allen coming up from his rover position to make the tackle. Bryce Douglas also good penetration. Bryce Douglas obviously comes from an athletic family. His dad, I believe his name was Bruce, was an MVP of the... Big Ten in basketball in his playing days for Illinois. So yeah, back in 1984, some, yeah. some athleticism there. And Douglas did start his career at Illinois before transferring you and I here a couple of years ago. Third and goal. Stick time. Wide open man on the flat is done, and the hometown boy has a touchdown. The corner on that wide side was Lawrence, and he was occupied by Ellison, who cuts inside to open up the flat, and Dunn is just able to make the catch and slide in. Bison with a chance to tie that. And the issue takes advantage of the Marquise Bridges interception, and just like that, we're an extra point away from tying the game. Peterson knocks it through. Tied at 14. Got a wild one here at Cedar Falls. 12.55 to go in the first quarter. Bison fans that made the trip oh, now is good time. Whether you're buying, building, or refinancing, Gate City Bank home loans are locally approved, financed, and serviced. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member of FDIC, equal housing lender. How about that ride? Not well, bad, young man. I think it's safe to say we are in John Deere country. <laughs> <laughs> Those green machines are made in this state. Here's a look at Marquise Bridges. Had a really big momentum-changing play here a moment ago as NDSU converts on the turnover. Williams will take it from his own one and bring it out this time. Good lean up the middle, and then he is upended. At the 30-yard line, football comes loose. Uh, are they going to say he was down? I thought the ball was coming out. Wimbush ends up with it. 
This will be a good Nodak Insurance Company replay to watch. Does the ball come out? I thought in live action it was out before he was down, and I was wrong. <laughs> Wimbush coming up a little bit slowly from the turf, and he will be helped to the sideline. That's a pretty dangerous move there for Xavier Williams on the return. Going up top with two buys and defenders. Can't say he wasn't going for it, because he was going for it. But now the key is, how's NDSU going to do against the run? I mean, the buys going to have to stop the run here. Done. Quickly thrown out the flat. And this goes to Nick Fossey, eighth reception of the year for the sophomore out of Lakeville North High School. And he's got enough for a first down up to the 45. He needs to give an attaboy to uh, Nissen, the tight end, number 85, because he makes a very key block on the edge to allow that play to get first down yardage. Marks back at the 42 yard line. Trevor Allen again. Taken out by Steitel and Robbie Grimsley after a pickup of three. So far, one of the few rushing plays we're seeing back up to the offense's right. They've been very left-handed so far today. And actually, Spencer Brown had a really nice shot in on someone. I think it was Karch. And off again inside. This time, Steitel and Karch. And that ball came loose, and Tuska picked it up. I think it was blown dead. Tuska, meanwhile, is in the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just mentioned. And Allen is a little bit slow getting up. But I just mentioned Karch's name, 53, and here's Karch in. Actually, Karch probably got lucky that he wasn't called for a face mask on that play, because that's how the helmet came off. And it makes you wonder if something happened with Trevor Allen's knee, as he was kind of ripped back with his knee on the turf there. Third and seven coming up for you and I. Y. Miller checks in at tailback. Third and long, the Bison have been bringing pressure against Dunn. That's been the history. Check and see if linebackers are coming. No. Dunn still backtracking. Dropped off to Y. Miller, and he has left wide open, and he will pick up a first down inside Bison territory down to the 36. Thought I saw Stanley Jones flying in there in the Nodak Insurance Company replay. See now Jones leaves his feet, and so it's hard for him to try to get back and recover out in the flat. Why Miller has all kinds of space, and it was Caleb Butler from the other defensive inside that had to run him down. Done to throw again. Stepping up, one-on-one -on -one coverage down the sideline is tipped away at the last moment by Jalen Allison. And Jalen Rama had a step. This is the first time that it seemed like on a long pass that Dunn was able to plant his back foot and give it a good heave. And it looked like a, almost a two-step advantage. Rama had to maybe slow down just a hair. Allison still trying to accelerate through the ball. He gets his left hand in there to punch it out. Y. Miller, this time taken down immediately, maybe picked up a yard. Coming from the backside to make that play was Levi Jordan. Let's take a look at your fun fact brought to you by the North Dakota Soybean Council. Did you know eating soy does not increase breast cancer risk? American Institute for Cancer Research's position on soy foods are they are just fine. Only safe, several key nutrients. Third and nine. Why is it bring an extra man? Setting up a screen and it's caught. And Trevor Allen has enough for a first down. Took a while for that play to develop, but well executed by you and I. And a first down to the 25. A couple of big third and longs converted by the Panthers. On screen type play. So the Panthers have the right call at the right time. He floated out to the flat and you have some big guys in there. Tuska made the tackle, but not before another first down on a screenplay. 
taking advantage of how aggressive NDSU is to try to get to the quarterback. Done. Across the middle. It is caught. Touchdown. You and I, Jalen James. the best throw of the day from Eli Dunn. He was able to step up and really get some mustard behind it. You just saw why he's been the starter here for the last, well, he's going on his third year. Dunn is able to plant the leg, get his legs into it, right behind the safety. Hendricks on a one-on-one -on -one post move. James makes a difficult catch in the end zone. Aritham adds the extra points, and back and forth we go. You and I back on top, 21-14, 9.26 to go in the second quarter. Twenty-one fourteen, setting up to be a shootout. Not sure anybody <laughs> thought it would be that type of game today. 9.26 to go in the second quarter. Tempo goes. That's why sports is fun, because you never know what's going to happen. 24 yards on that connection as Anderson will let that sail over his head. And the issue will start at his own 25-yard line. Let's take a look at the Bobcat scoring recap. You and I, eight plays, 69 yards. And again, doing it quickly in just three and a half minutes as Jalen James hauls it in from 24 yards out. Did not have a catch last week against Indiana State. So far done, 9 of 14 for 192 yards, two touchdowns, and the one interception to Bridges. Outside and up again to Bruce Anderson, who picks up a chunk of yard. Look at him move the pile. Picked up about seven or eight yards after contact. Gain of 15 to the 40. Let's go down to Ryan Geller. Guys, a guys, a first international bank and trust sideline report. It is an upper jaw injury for Jalen Wimbush, the free safety for North Dakota State. He got hit on the side of the head. His jaw, guys, uh, does not feel good. His, re his uh, return right now, very questionable for North Dakota State. All right, thank you, Ryan. Done. Eludes one man in the hole as Bryce Douglas was looking for a call and didn't get it. Six yards on that pickup for Dunn. Interesting setup on that particular play. Your tight end and both wide receivers to the short side of the field, allowing Dunn to try to beat one-on-one. -on -one. Douglas is saying he was held on the play, may have been. But then if Kalarvik doesn't run it down from behind, you have done one-on-one -on, -one on, on this free safety, which is what the Bison were hoping for. Done. Stretch play to the outside. Cutting it back up in and staying on his feet. And getting a first down across the 50 before Furch makes another tackle. been interesting to see guys like Roosevelt Lawrence he's he's getting in position to maybe attempt to make a tackle but so far he doesn't look like he really wants to get in there and mix it up so Lawrence the corner comes down in Brock Robbins takes care of him fairly easily and NDSU gets the first round game again well there's been a room for NDSU up the middle and on the perimeter that's nine more for Lance Dunn Bison eating up chunks of yards, now 136 rushing yards so far here in the first half. Nodak Insurance Company replay, and I obviously, I think, I shouldn't say obviously, but I think what Douglas was trying to do on that play, he was running an X, so the nose guard, the nose tackle, was coming around the left end, and that helped really open up the middle, so the Bison had the right call against the defense. Anderson, again through a hole. Well, tough running, enough for a first down to the 36. Bryce Douglas on the bottom of that pile. We should say uh, Zach Johnson's back in as well. So Zach uh, may have gotten retaped or got that ankle looked at. He's back in at his right tackle position. Anderson. 
Anderson bubbles this time around. E.G. Allen down the sideline goes Bruce Anderson. Finally pushed out of bounds by the freshman Javon Brecky at the 12. Anderson now over 100 rushing yards here in the first half alone. Beautiful one-on-one -on -one play. He's just able to bounce it, belly it a little bit outside, and then turn it up with some speed. A.J. Allen, it's his job to make the catch, and he could not get himself in position. Anderson around the edge. Twelve carries, 111 yards for Anderson, who came in to this game averaging 7.3 yards a carry and now is averaging about nine yards a carry today. That 7.3 you're talking about is top 10 in the FCS in yards per carry. Bison take a timeout. 6.17 to go, and we will step aside as well. 21-14, but NDSU knocking on the door inside the red zone of UNI when we come back. Bundar trying to rally the troops. 21-14. UNI leads it. 6-17 to go until half time. NDSU. Come out behind for me. pitch position in order to play the running back and a great job on the outside by the Bison to allow Dunn the opportunity to get into the end zone. They're going to review it because the ball did come loose from Dunn very late to make sure he had the football when he crossed the goal line. And it, remember it is standard practice that all scoring plays get reviewed. Sometimes it just happens a lot faster because there's nothing to look at. Here's our Nodak Insurance Company replay. Dunn's trying to stretch it in. Yeah, he's got oh, it. Oh, he's That's got a it. Touchdown. It, hit, it was his knee that hit the that hit the pylon, and he was well inside that. No doubt. Yep, he's got it. You don't have to look very hard at that one. But again, our replays are not the replays that the officials in the booth are looking at. So it is a touchdown for Dunn, his second touchdown of the day. <laughs> a shootout here at Sheriff Field. Boy, oh, Andy Issue is wearing out UNI defense on the ground. 23 rush attempts for 176 yards here in the first half. But the flip side of that is the Panthers are two in a a decent job as well on the ground, averaging over four yards a carry. Yeah. 
Show your buys and pride today with an NDSU Gate City Bank ATM and check card. Visit gatecity.bank slash my card. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC. So far, North Dakota State's run 31 plays here in the first half. 23 of those on the ground. On the flip side for UNI, they've run 28 plays, 14 pass, 14 run. I think the Bison have done a terrific job of absorbing that initial first blow, and that first blow was a 14-point deficit, and now it's tied back up. But on the same token in that second quarter, I think UNI's done a pretty decent job on the ground as well to, to get the lead right back. So both teams on offense having a lot of things to smile about. Both teams on defense are scratching their heads. North Dakota State will get the football first coming out of the locker room at halftime. The Bison defense can come up with a stop. Peterson, another Peterson farm seat kickoff. Williams from his own one. Moves one man and now has a lane. Stide steps the kicker. And finally dragged out from behind by Josh Hayes. More good field position for Northern Iowa to the 41. Kodak Insurance Company replay. Staying patient until he gets that one tackle. He rolled through that one arm tackle. Of course, the kicker's never an issue. Hayes with good speed to run him down from behind, but that's where you want to start a drive from. Looks like Adam Cofield was the man that had an initial shot at him coming in from the left and could not wrap him up. Done. Across the middle, Rima's open. Josh Hayes just made that tackle a moment ago in a defensive back pickup of eight. Thought Hayes was playing press coverage on the outside. A pretty good initial move on a jab step to, from Rima to get back in, and then Dunn had some time. He's felt footsteps today, but when he's had time, he's delivered. Trevor Allen. That right in the hole there by Robbie Grimsley. And I think he's going to be a yard short of a first down to the 50. Well, the defensive backs for both sides today have such a tough job because obviously they need to be part of stopping the run. The run has been effective for both teams, but yet you have to make sure that your read is right and that the ball doesn't get pulled out and it's an RPO to the pass. UNI three or four on third down. The Bison coming in, giving up just 29% so far this season. Why Miller ahead? Well, I don't know. No, short. Needed the 49 of NDSU, and where he's being marked now is right at the line of scrimmage. This is kind of a risky decision if Mark Farley does indeed decide to go for it here, but we'll see. Offense is looking to the sideline and no one is walking off. Fourth, Fourth and one. Four out of five so far on the year. On fourth down is you and I. Done out of the shotgun. And now a timeout. Play clock down to six. First time out of the half taken by you and I. I think it was at Briley Moore they were trying to figure out and get in position. I think Moore started on the right side of the formation. Dunn made a call. Moore tried to work off to the left. And when you look back up, there's six seconds on the play clock. So on a fourth and one from midfield, late in the half, and you have timeouts, it's a good spot to use one. Are you surprised at all? Well, Line up to go for it? Uh, a little bit. But when you're playing the number one team in the nation, you are always in the what do you have to lose position. So if you want to be aggressive, by all means, go for it. You've witnessed what your defense has done, which is not much. Try as hard as you can to keep the ball. So. Here comes the offense, oh, two the, tight ends. These roll of the dice plays are what really makes this game fun. Why Miller is the tailback. He is more of your short yardage guy. Fourth down.
Weimiller fumbled it, and then he's met by Grimsley. He didn't get there. James Hendricks also came in. Dan Marlett, I think, really made a gorgeous move to get inside Tyler Putney. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Watch 48. He gets inside the hip of Putney, so the offensive lineman cannot get a push on the linebacker, so that really helps. Here's 48. Look at him suck inside that hip. Hend uh, Hendricks is there. Grimsley's there. That play lost about a half a yard. So the gamble does not pay off for Mark Farley. And now North Dakota State with 257 and two timeouts has a chance to take the lead. Anderson working off a block. Take it down after a gain of a couple. Klarovic got in there. Duncan Furch also in on another stop. Birch actually looked like, I think initially, like he was coming on a blitz and he was picked up by the guard, but he did a really, really good job of keeping his hands free so he didn't get tied up inside and was able to flow to the near side to help get in on that tackle. Stick will throw. It's been a while. Fires. And that is broken up. Dallas Freeman, the intended target. Target Williams comes in on the coverage. Third down and eight. Third down and seven coming up for NDSU. Here's Stick trying to come right back at you. And then the combination of the ball arriving and the defensive person arriving at the same time. Neil with a little push, stumbling down on. Uh, stick after the pass was thrown and third and long here for India A little different look on that play too. They had Jensen kind of in a double slot so no tight end on that last play which is a different look for you and I. Bruce Anderson in that tailback. Trip receivers. Stick under pressure. Neal is there as well as Ellerson Smith. And the UNI defense comes up with a big stop with just two minutes to go here until halftime. Both defensive ends kind of winning their battle. One way that these two defensive ends and those two guys who were in on that play was kind of described me uh, was told they bend real well. But what does that mean? It means a they're athletic and b it's really difficult for a defensive or excuse me an offensive tackle to get that initial punch and slow down the defensive end right off the off the bat. Both of those kids are good at it and they both won on that play. Wagner drops a snap and no rush. And this is kind of a low wobbler. Williams will come up and take it. And we make a pretty good return out of it up to the 31. So you and I an opportunity here with 119 left until halftime. Williams getting up a little bit slowly. One of the starting corners. Aggressive. Northern Iowa comes out here. I would think very. If you're going to go for it on fourth and one at the 50, last possession, why wouldn't you want to try to be aggressive and get points here? Allen makes the reception. Marquise Bridges comes over to make the tackle after a pickup of about eight, maybe nine now to the 40. Ticking down towards one minute to go. Boy, nothing that time. That lost a couple yards. Well, Marlette has been able to sniff out which hole this play is designed to go, and he's getting in to the spot. He's getting low, and he's muscling his way through some of those offensive linemen. Move carry for Trevor Allen. Done. Fires low and complete. 
Jalen James makes the reception at the 46. 22 seconds left until halftime. Little crossing route. Moore takes the inside. James takes the outside. Now a whistle. Timeout. I think. Previous play. It's under further review. Uh, we're going to take a look at it to see if the catch was made. Yeah, James had to go low to scoop it up, but it looked like he had his hands underneath it. Mark Farley in his 18th year as the head coach. Kodak Insurance Company replay. That looks pretty good. Yeah, I thought he had it, unless Did he. Sure to look like he controlled it into his body. Yeah, Mark Farley, 144 and 74 in his time at UNI. I can always remember his hometown. Because he's the walk-on. He was when he was a player, he was the walk-on from walk-on. One more look at it. Good job by James with that ball behind him. Of course, before Farley, Terry Allen here had a tremendous coaching career. And Courtney Messingham actually played for Terry Allen, as did Chris Kleiman. And they both also played for Daryl Mudra, who was the head oh. coach here at Northern Iowa before Terry Allen. And certainly a connection there with Mudra and his time in North Dakota State. The clock will start on my ready for play. The official, as soon as he winds it up, the clock will start. Looks like Marquise Bridges is going to be single covered. Now he'll back. Nope, he's going to jam it. Dunn stepping up across the middle, and the reception is made at the 25 by Briley Moore. A couple of explosive tight ends on this UNI offense, and certainly Moore is one of them in a timeout with 13 seconds to go. Riley Moore was recruited as a wide receiver, and he's in a wide receiver spot here as we take a look at him getting behind Marlette and making the tackle. But this is a kid that put on 60 pounds since he's been here, keeping some of those wide receiver skills and, and making the NFL really take notice of his ability. As a blocker, not so much. As a pass catcher, one of the best tight ends around. Moore, two receptions, 96 yards. Of course, he got you and I on the board early with a 60-yard touchdown. Eli Dunn has 248 passing yards here in the first half, and you're talking against an NDSU defense that was number two in the FCS against the pass, giving up just 132 a game. So the senior done. He's been upright though for the most yeah, part of this first protected. half. Absolutely. Done. Fires. Reception made again by James. He is wrestled out of bounds by Marquise Bridges. Gain of about seven. Eight seconds left. Maybe one more play until you can kick a field goal. You see it just come into the bottom half of your screen there, a simple out pattern. Nice ball skills as Bridges tried to break it up. Boy, the momentum shifts in this game have been Huge. like a roller coaster ride. Done. Running out of time. Now he's going to run and he just throws it away as he got out of the pocket with two seconds left. Pretty heady play by the senior. Because Here comes he, Aritham. The key there is what you said there, Brian. He slides out of the pocket. If he makes that throw from, from uh, the in the middle of the pocket, it is intentional grounding. Because there was no receiver there. But once he slides to the near side, gets out of the pocket, you can get rid of the ball. Bridges working on James. 
Bridges again was going to be willing to give up something underneath, but certainly not something over the top. Aritham four of five last week at Indiana State. He missed from 49, connected on the other four. This one will be from 32. It is up, and it is good. And that will end the first half. UNI jumped out 14 nothing. NDSU came back to tie it. What a wild first half it was. Brian Geller is standing by with Chris Kleiman. I have the early punch early state in this football game. Yeah, we're in the football game. But we're not playing very well. Uh, we've got to shore some things up on defense. You guys trying to do too many things. Offensively, we need to keep running the football because we think we can run it on them. So we got to make some adjustments. Good football game. We know it's going to be like this. See you in the second half. Guys, back upstairs. Well, Chris has been in this building a lot over the years. 24 21. It's been a wild one. <laughs> it should it be has. a final. Two quarters should be uh, pretty wild as well. We'll step aside. The ProSeed Halftime Report is coming up next. Alex Egan, Beth Houle standing by back in our Fargo studio. We'll see you back here in Cedar Falls in about 20 minutes. here at the Unidome in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Just what we thought, right? <laughs> An offensive shootout between these two longtime rivals. Almost 550 total yards of offense between the two teams. LT, what do each team need to do in the second half to clean things up defensively? Well, I think the main thing uh, is that they, they haven't gotten to Dunn. Zero sacks. I mean, Dunn's been hit a couple of times. The interceptions, the, he was hit, but zero sacks. That's one thing that NDSU has been able to do in their victories the last couple of years against Dunn is that get him to the ground with the ball in his hand. And for you and I, didn't really show much of a resistance against North Dakota State's running game no. either in that first half. What do they do to adjust to that? Uh, that's a question I don't <laughs> think I have the answer to because the interior of that uh, NDSU offensive line is winning. And when you're doing that, you're allowing uh, people like Bruce Anderson to bounce it outside a little bit. So those punches up the gut, up the middle that for uh, NDSU to, that has gotten 172 offensive rushing yards already in this game. So you, you hit them on the inside, big plays on the inside always opens up something on the outside as well. The amount of explosive plays Ooh, we've crazy. seen North Dakota State have and give up the last couple of weeks has been, I think, unusual for us yeah. to see. But at the same time, I think teams are trying to take their shots at the number one team in the land and, and maybe gamble a little bit. And that's what we've seen. I know in our conversation with Coach Ancy simply said, we need to play better. Uh, that has not happened yet today. What will those adjustments be? I don't know. We'll see if we can pick them up and if there's a chance that Coach Kleiman's team can uh, slow down the Panthers here. But the fact that you and I has the lead at halftime, oh, I wouldn't have guessed that, to be honest with you. Well, NDSU will have the football first to kick off the second half. The Bison again, very successful on the ground. 25 rush attempts, 172 yards, averaging seven yards a carry. Bruce Anderson doing most of the damage, 116 yards in that first half alone. I know the Panthers, uh, Brian, had only 57 yards rushing in that first half, but you know what? In the, in the way that that half played out, that was just enough. It was just enough to not be throwing on every down and, and to keep the Bison a little bit off balance. So far here today, you and I, for each reception, is averaging 18 yards. They're taking shots down the field. It started with Riley Moore in that 64-yard touchdown reception on the opening drive, and ever since then, it's been a little wild. Well, you and I were talking uh, about Riley Moore while uh, Beth and Alex were working back at the studio on the pregame show. That that kid is impressive. He's the, he's the real deal as a pass catcher. So here at we'll get it started here in the third quarter. Another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed right in the middle of the field and taking a knee. Back there was Lance Dunn. And remember, he's back there because Ty Brooks is unavailable today and is not here in the uniform. And it's pretty much been Dunn and Anderson the whole way here, which certainly makes sense. Two most experienced guys, two seniors. 
Lions will start it on the right hash at the 25. Let's take a look at your quarterback numbers. Brought to you by the North Dakota Beef Commission. Easton Stick did not throw the ball much in that first half because of the success on the ground. Four of nine, 56 yards. Did have the two touchdowns, the long one to Shepard. He was sacked once late in the first half. Stutter step for Anderson, busting it outside. And Bruce gains about seven more as Ricky Neal was the one that tried to get over there to take him down. Play not necessarily designed to go where it ended up. Panthers really did a, a pretty good job on that off tackle to try to jam that up, and Anderson is able to bounce. We saw that in the first half. He was able to do that very well. But both Dunn and Anderson with over 2,000 career yards already. Of a high snap again. Boy, nifty running inside. Great feet. That time for Bruce Anderson, who's got a first down up to the 39. And a UNI player is down. I mean, down at about the 35. Isn't moving. Douglas, that, is it? Nodak Insurance Company replay as we look at it. We'll try to see who's in the middle of that pile. We missed that, but we, just, we do see Sander coming up to make the tackle. Let's go to. Let's go to Ryan Gellner to revisit our keys to the game. Guys, I am uh, on the sideline with a former Bison football player who is uh, giving back right now. Jed Reese here, you'll remember him, the uh, former Bison fullback, is uh, giving back in a unique way, aren't you, Jed? Yeah, uh, hauling the equipment for the team to the away games now. He is, he is the truck driver for the away game. We'll have more from Jed Reese when we come back. Joining now in live action, Bruce Anderson gaining 12 more yards across the 50-yard line. Let's take a look at the replay. Similar type of a look. You get Neal getting taken care of on the outside. Dimitri Williams looked like he had a pretty nice block on the, on the edge. And more of that success on the ground for NDSU. Stretch play to Dunn around the edge. Boy, runs over Williams. And another good gain, Lance pumped up. Five yards. But these runs into the boundary. Last two guys change him up. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Anderson with success. Dunn with a little pop there on Xavier Williams. Again, I don't think the corners, and then again, that's a, another one of the reasons why the, some success is being made on the outside is because these U and I corners are, are not gutting it up to try to stop the run. Up the middle this time for Dunn. Plugged up pretty good in there as he's turned back at the line of scrimmage. Third and about four or five. That was Bryce Douglas who did come out on that last uh, play, that last injury. We thought we might see some quarterback run today, LT. So far, Easton Stick, no carries. Not much. Look at how wide Neal is coming on the rush. Stick eluding the rush. Here comes Neal giving chase and throwing left-handed out of bounds. And a flag by the linesman. Yeah, about the 38 yard line. Neal's going to come off. You see, he jumps past Smith. He knows Neal's on his heels, switches to his left hand to get the ball out. And the call goes against North Dakota State. So again, the Bison able to march into UNI territory. Did that twice in the first half early. Downfield on the offense by multiple players. That penalty is declined. It'll be fourth down. And Garrett Wigner will come out to punt. Uh, 
End over end again. This one sailing inside the 10 and will take a UNI bounce into the end zone. And the Panthers will start at their own 20. We'll step aside one more time. Still 24 21 on the Egg Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard. There's a look at Eli Dunn. See what the Bison can do to slow that guy down. 250 yards passing in that first half. Take a look at his numbers brought to you by the North Dakota Beef Commission. Did have the one interception to Bridges. Not much up the middle. Bison pushed that back. Gain of a couple. Trevor Allen. Trevor Allen. Looks like Derek Tusk on the bottom of that pile along with Aaron Steitle. But you can tell where the ball was going to go because Jackson Scott Brown, the left guard, was pulling into that hole. So it's a fairly easy read for the Bison. They just have to get there and try and stop it. Tuska crashes down. Dan Marlette gave himself up as well to smash into that into that hole as we see Allen limping off. So Weimiller checks in as Allen is putting very little pressure on that right ankle. Dunn's going to keep it this time. And Tusk again tracks it down. They bring up third and five. Let's go back to Ryan Gellner. Guys, we are back down on the sideline with Jed Sear, former fan favorite, former fullback for the Bison. And Jed, you said you've given back a little bit. You are now hauling equipment back and forth. You made the trip to you and I. Yep, um, uh, I'll be hauling the equipment to the away games for the team. Trying to get back a little bit just to be a part of it again. It's a, it's a good experience. It's a very different way of what you were used to. You were used to putting on the uniform and, and getting set playing in games. And while you're a big part of it, the spotlight is gone and all of that. It's kind of the grunt work right now. But talk about how rewarding it must be to drive that truck down the road, Bison logo on the side, the team that you used to play for. You know, it's uh, it's uh, it's very humbling just to be able to do it and then see all the fans going by you down to the game and then being able to be a part of the back scenery into putting into the games. Safe travels on your way back from Fargo and everywhere else that you take the Bison this year. Thank you. Meanwhile, Darius Shepard back the other way, takes one on a hop and then a little bit of a horse, horse collar, collar at the end as Shepard went out of bounds at the 35, so that might even bring it in closer. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Jedry. That sack, by the way, that you saw as we threw it down in an interview made by Greg Menard and Dan Marlette. Now Greg Menard climbs up that all-time ladder, and then he buys and followed up with a special teams play and a personal foul, I believe, on the back end of that. Shepard was the horse collar is grabbing the back of the neck. You cannot do that anymore. Well, now I don't see the well, moving the ball forward. The ball. So apparently they picked it up. Okay, interesting. Thought it was obvious. Still good field position here as NDSU forces a three and out on the other end. That was an important stop for the Bison defense. Boy, they've had a hard time bringing down Bruce Anderson. Three more yards before Ricky Neal makes the tackle. Warwick also coming in. Tanner Bolson is having a really good game. He's the center. Bryce Douglas is back in the game for UNI, by the way. Stick throws on target to Christian Watson. And Watson getting physical on the perimeter. Second career catch for the redshirt freshman out of Florida. Played at Plant High School and up for a first down to the 23. Well, you love the finish. Uh, in terms of tackling, these corners are not very good at it. I like the way Watson is able to get the ball back into the, uh, the, the arm away from where the, the corner's coming. And it frees up his left arm in, or, in order to create some space and pick up the first. Well done on the outside. And off again goes to the outside. Anderson into some trouble this time. The safety. Javon Brecky coming up to make the tackle after a pickup of 
maybe a yard to the 22. And Brecky forced into action because Austin Evans, the sophomore starter, hurt against Montana, has not played since. And, and Brecky, if you remember the uh, passing touchdown to Shepard, he was the kid that the Bison picked on on that play. Play action, stick stepping up across the middle. Shepard, another catch and another touchdown. You see who he beat? The freshman, Brecky. Nodak Insurance Company replay. This will be a great look at what Stick sees. Boy, does he step up and fire it hard. Shepard has to make an adjustment on the ball. He gets inside the safety. Brecky on a post route. And again, Darius Shepard can finish strong, and he does to get that ball into the end zone as NDSU retakes the lead. 22 yards on the touchdown from Stick to Shepard. Extra point is good for Peterson, and for the first time today, NDSU leads it 28-24. Stick to Shepard. We're back in a minute. Darius Shepard, his second touchdown of the day, a strike from Easton Stick. Nice catch by the senior having to go back across his body a little bit to haul it in. I also really like how Shep was aggressive on that low punt that bounced. He came up, got it, got it down to about the 40. Peterson, put it away to Williams. He's had some success in the return game here. Boy, tough guy to tackle. Finally, Jackson Brown finishes him off. Looks like Jackson Hanky and Dimitri Williams got him around the ankles, and you and I will start at the 22. Buying, building, or refinancing. Start with a Gate City Bank Blue Standard pre-approval and experience a better home loan. Get started today at GateCity.Bank. For a better way of life, member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Why Miller? Nothing. Aaron Steitel, Blake Williams, Jabril Cox all there to stop him after a gain of a half yard. I know we talked about it in the first half and Dunn had success on it on one particular play, but I think he's going to have to keep it every once in a while. Now Wilma, Wilma, Why Miller, Miller comes off a little bit gimpy and Allen back on. Bobcat scoring a recap, four plays, 35 yards, and again Shepard with the touchdown reception and the really strong punt return. To back up Brian's point, both of the top three running backs, and there's a movement on the right guard, both key running backs have come off the field at one time during this game limping. Somebody moving early for UNI. Putney. 78. Some offense, number 78. Five yard penalty. Second down. And Putney, Putney forced into action because of the injury to Nick Ellis. Yeah, he's the... Uh, Listed second, he's the backup, uh, the primary backup at left tackle playing right guard. Second and 14. McShane's been quiet today. Dunn, Fossey makes the reception. Picks up seven to bring up third and seven. Marcus Bridges on the coverage. Nothing fancy. Fossey not trying to make a play after the catch. Panthers just content with getting half of what was needed for the first. Cal Twait making a call uh, on the offensive line adjustment. Done. Hangs in there across the middle. McShane makes the reception short of a first down by a yard. Let's go down to Ryan Gellner. Hey guys, hey guys, just a couple of injuries to update you on. We talked about Jalen Wimbush early on. He has been ruled out for the rest of the game. And then offensively for the Bison, 
Desmond Kane, guys, has been ruled out as well. He has a rib injury. Both right. guys out. All right, your first International Bank and Trust injury report, and Kane has been battling a shoulder off and on here for the last few weeks. One of those things Cordy Messingham told us, he's just going to have to play through it. Here comes Kibbe on for another punt, another low liner. Takes a hop, and Grimsley will field it and go to a knee, and the Bison will have it at the 30-yard line. On the third down play, gorgeous hit after the catch made by Levi Jordheim. McShane makes the catch. He's not a big kid, but he was unable to get out of the grasp of Jordheim, and for the second time, the Bison get a stop on three and out on a couple of nice defensive plays. Menard on the other one. This time it was Jordheim right about a yard short of what was needed for the first. So the Bison offense right back to work. <laughs> Tiptoeing through a hole is done. Another good push. And six more yards to the 36. Right into the teeth of the Panther defense. Time after time after time today, the Panthers have gotten hit and hit fairly hard up the middle. Brinkman is the man that was moved very, very well by the right guard. Runs right off of that. And you'll take six yards on first down every time. Klarvik missing a tackle there in the hole to limit that game. Dunn again trying to push the pile forward. It's going to be stopped about a yard short of a first down. Klarvik in on the tackle. There's the redshirt freshman, number 48. Leading tackler for this Panther defense coming into today. Yeah, his, his only D1 offer was to UNI. I mean, this guy was not heavily recruited out of Michigan. And now he's earned himself a starting spot. And his play is really important because Jake Hartford, who was supposed to be a starter, has been out the entire year. And Mark Farley said earlier this week he will not be back for at least another month. Third downs are defining moments in football games. Here's an important third down. Went to Brock Robbins, I think, on the dive, and he didn't get there. A.J. Allen was one of the players that came flying in there from his uh, defensive back position, rover position, right before that snap. So you see 23. That's right where the Bison had, had the play call. And that's where your defensive coordinator put the senior Allen in the right spot at the right time. Garrett Wegner will try to pin UNI deep once again. Angle towards the sideline will take a hop at the 24 and out of bounds at the 18. Wagner does his job. Fortunately for Northern Iowa, stopped defensively. Well, whether you're buying, building, or refinancing, Gate City Bank has home loans and are locally approved, financed, and serviced. Gate City Bank for a better way of life, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Well, so far in the second half, LT, first down has been good to NDSU defensively, not so good in the first half. <laughs> uh, poor. In the first, yeah. There's other words you could use, but poor is one that's accurate. Dunn's going to pull it again. Tuska, boy, he's quick. Takes him down after a gain of three. It's just so strange with all the good running quarterbacks that this Valley Conference has that you basically don't have to worry about the run much with Dunn. But we talked about it in an earlier possession where Dunn's going to have to pull that every once in a while just to try to keep the Bison defense a little more honest. Play action, Dunn. Skipped that one into his tight end and they say it was caught at the 25. And now an official comes in from the backside, the side judge, and says no, it hit the turf incomplete. So third down and seven coming up. Well, Briley Moore being targeted once again. Nodak Insurance Company replay, tail end of that, incomplete. Skipped. Nice, really solid job by the back judge to come in 
to overrule this particular play saying I saw it perfectly it skipped incomplete. You and I has not converted a third down here in the second half. Bison putting on pressure done across the middle. Ryman is going to have to run for it and he's able to get it across the 30. Boy Bridges was in position but he couldn't close it out. Ryman with excellent speed. In fact to be honest with you I thought Ryman would be a, maybe a more important aspect of this offense at this point of his career especially how good he was as a freshman. Well on the loss of Doris Fountain who was the top receiver for you and I a year ago why Miller keeps the legs moving finally dragged down by Greg Menard after a pickup of six. That's what my why Miller does so well he finishes finishes well Levi Jordheim had a pretty good hit but he couldn't quite wrap up ran through that tackle and picked up about another four. Done again will keep it hit by a couple of different Bison Stanley Jones and Robbie Grimsley team up for that tackle after a gain of a couple will bring up third and two. Dunn tries to spin to get around the first guy and here's Jones coming from behind to help plant him down. Another big third down. You and I five of nine today. It looks like somebody may have moved and they are saying false start. I think Zerbeck the center started to rock back and roll back before he snapped it. So that puts you and I in third and long again. Illegal snap on the offense for 79. Double clutch of the ball. Watch the hand. Oh, yeah, you see he's back on his heels. He rolled back and he's like, uh oh, this is not the snap count. Novak Insurance Company bringing you the replays today. So the Bison will bring in their pass rush unit with Caleb Butler inside. And Cole Karch inside where he usually is, but again started his career as a defensive end. Done. Flushed. Now downfield and it's caught. And I think that is Sudi Lane. Who is typically a defensive player. He's listed on the two deep as the outside linebacker backup. Makes a big catch there on third down to move the chains. Once he sees his quarterback start to slide out to the right though he made a terrific move to get away and get some space away from Bridges on that particular play. For a guy who doesn't play there a lot that was a really really good adjustment. Why Miller taken down after a gain of one. Blake Williams and Aaron Steitel close things down. I know NDSU rotates a lot of guys in in there and that defense especially on the defensive line. But you can start to tire those guys out even with that many defensive linemen when you pick up first downs. Why Miller more room this time through a hole cutting it back. And why Miller has a first down to the Bison 34 yard line before Marquise Bridges makes the tackle. This is easily the best why Miller has looked all year or the best I've seen him on on tape look but he feels the pressure from Bridges coming off to his right he's able to get that right leg planted in the ground busts it off to the middle of the field and picks up about another five or six yards. Those are the little things you just you can't teach you can either, you either have it or you don't. Oh ball is loose Dunn got back on top of it. Loses three yards. I think McShane actually hit the ball. The the fake was going to go to McShane the motion man on the jet no insurance company replay see if this ball hits number four it does the point of the ball hits McShane and then the Panthers just jump back on top of it. Allen on the edge. Picks up about eight more. That will bring up third and six. James Hendricks on the stop for NDSU. Hurry up. Panthers hurrying up here.
Dunn. Slant. I'm not sure if it was a caught by Fossey. Yeah. Wow, that was a great catch. Brought it in with one arm right at the sticks. Enough for a first down to the 24. Working against Josh Hayes on a hard slant. And as a quarterback, you have to power this ball in there. This will come right at you. He zips it. Hayes puts a good stick. But it was right at the marker. First down. Northern Iowa now 7 of 12 on third down. And they've had a three or four of them here on this drive. Done. Across the middle. Open man in the middle. Touchdown. That is Dion McShane. Strong arm to make this throw. Look at where his head is. It's out to the left. He's looking left the whole time, and all of a sudden he's like, "Hey, I have number four working back to the middle of the field." His front side shoulder was not pointed at where he threw the ball. Very difficult to do. You need a strong arm to try to finish that throw, which Dunn just did. Airtham. Not through really the extra point. Northern Iowa gains the lead back. As the third quarter comes to an end, 15 minutes left here in Cedar Falls, 31-28 on the Ag Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard. It's done. Connects with McShane, 26 yards. Getting set for the start of the fourth quarter here in Cedar Falls, Northern Iowa, jumping back on top. Eli Dunn. By far having his best game against North Dakota State. 20 of 27 for 328 yards, three touchdowns, and one interception. And some monster third down pickups on that drive. Bison just could not get off the field. Iritham, another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. This one coming down to Anderson, four yards deep. He will take an E. And ESU will take over at the 25. And ESU 218 rushing yards so far. Northern Iowa's done just enough on the ground. 29 rush attempts, 85 yards. We'll take a look at Chris Kleiman. After the play. Two backs in the backfield here for North Dakota State. Stick stepping up. Bruce Anderson down the seam. And Anderson is off to the races. He is gone. 75 yards. Touchdown. This roller coaster ride just will not end. <laughs> a quick strike answer. The safeties were playing a few games pre snap. And Stick is able to just look off, comes back to his left. Anderson jumps over the one, and he is in for the 75 yard touchdown. The Bison right back out in front. Extra point is booted through and will step aside. That drive 11 seconds long is NDSU. An explosive play of their own. Stick to Anderson, 75 yards, and the Bison lead again. That man has been busy. 75 receiving yards on that touchdown, 146 rushing yards, and the Bison back in front, 35-31. Peterson with another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Williams from a seven. He's had some lanes, not this time. Dimitri Williams, Jackson Brown making the tackle at the 22. Yeah, his lanes and his yards returning came from midfield. That was a directional kick purposefully designed to make sure that they, uh, you and I had to return it. Could have called the fair catch, if you will, but... Bison squeezed him into that corner. 
Show your buys and pride today with an NDSU Gate City Bank ATM and check card. Visit gatecity.bank slash my card. Gate City Bank for a better way of life, member FDIC. So the NDSU defense back on the field quickly here to start the fourth. Done. Taken down by Jabril Cox. That's an excellent play by the sophomore linebacker as Fossey made the reception. Well, he's a linebacker, obviously, but in this particular play, he's playing what the, the role of what your nickel safety would do. So he is playing the tackle, or excuse me, the tight end in the slot. They're trying to go to a wide receiver screen. He's able to bust right past Moore and make the tackle for only a short gain. That's an athletic move. Done. Stepping up in the pocket. Now he's going to run, and Jordheim, along with Marlette, come in to make the stop. We'll bring up another third down, third and five. Really important, for, I think, for NDSU's defense to get off the field. Yes, there was a quick, quick strike touchdown by Shepard to take the lead back, but the drive prior that the Panthers had, this defense was on the field for a long time. Key third down. Across the middle to McShane who makes the catch and has a first down. Jabril Cox in coverage. McShane's a track man, also a hurdler. One of the major reasons he came here because he wants to run track as well. Yeah, state champ in Illinois in both the 110 and 300 hurdles last year. And we will hear the name McShane next week as well from the same family. Nodak Insurance Company replay. He just gets the inside release on Jabril Cox, and he couldn't quite catch back up to him. Again, McShane with really good speed. Once he learns how to play football, he's really going to be good because his route running and everything is pretty sloppy at this stage because he's so young. And you and I continues to convert on third down. And the Bison came in as one of the top third down defense is in the nation. Also number one in the Valley in sacks. Only one on done today. Allen tiptoeing, waiting. And then taken down by Jordheim after a short game. Jackson Hankey playing right now, and I think it's just a, a because NDSU needs to try to get a little bit of a rotation, get some rest for some of these guys in there. Nope, sorry, Hanky, that wasn't Hanky. My fault. It was Karch. Across the middle to Nissen, boy, nice read by Levi Jordan. No game. There was all kinds of things happening on that particular play, faking the screen. Remember how much success you and I had in the first half on screen? So it's a it's a fake out to the left. You're trying to slide the tight end back up underneath. But Jordheim was not fooled. Third down again. Third down and eight. Bernard almost in a linebacker stance. Just a three down look here for NDSU. He'll be rushing. Done under pressure. Running. Nobody out there to throw it to. And Jabril Cox takes him down back at the 30. And NDSU gets a much needed third down stop to get off the field. Nodak Insurance Company replay done doesn't have anybody to throw it to at this point and he just exposes himself to the hit. He also did that a little bit earlier on the same drive so Dunn's allowing himself to get hit hard a couple of times but there's nobody behind Cox who's playing in a zone. No chance to throw it. Bison get that stop that they so desperately need. That defense needs a rest. So Kibby will boot it down. Takes a UNI hop. Good one. Inside the 25. Comes to a stop at the 22 yard line. And we will step aside. 10.59 to go. North Dakota State with the football and the lead when we come back. Easton stick in the Bison offense. 
Back on the field after the NDSU defense got a stop starting at the 22. Stick out to Shepard. Runs through it, Xavier Williams, and is close to a first down, and where they're marking him, I think he has it at the 32. These guys and receivers are getting physical finishing on the run after the catch. You mentioned it, LT. The corners have not been real physical. No, they've been uh, a little soft in that in that uh, realm today. Dunn to the outside. Got a great seal block, and Dunn's got room. Lance Dunn finally tripped up by Corby Sander at the 49. That's a gain of 17 more as NDSU is close to midfield. Let's go to Ryan Geller. Hey, guys, another First International Bank and Trust sideline report. You think we're in for a wild finish here? Well, James Madison in a wild finish as well. The Dukes just took a lead over Elon 24-20 with seven minutes and 22 seconds to go there. Across the valley, real quickly, Western Illinois leads Illinois State 13-12, and Missouri State leads South Dakota 21-17 at the half. All right, thank you much, Ryan. And boy, North Dakota State now picking up big chunks of yardage on this drive. All you have to do is watch the guy who doesn't have the ball, and you know where the ball's going. That is Brock Robbins, 34, leading the play. Tanner Bolson with a little bit of a pull and a seal block. Both the success to the left, success to the right, you have that fullback in there leading the way. This Bison offense really now trying to help its defense out by staying on the field. You love the quick strike to get the lead. Bison would love to grind one here. Malstrom now in at fullback. Dunn sidesteps around one man and then picks up the first down. Ball was whistled loose. Or was, it was down. whistled down. Ball did maybe come loose at the end of that. Four-yard pickup for Dunn. I always tell how big of a, pile, of, of a pile it is and how long it takes people to get off the bottom of it. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Handoff here to Dunn. Nice adjustment in the backfield, but then see how he squares his shoulders back up. Runs right through a corner again to pick up the first down, and then Zach Johnson and others on top of that thing. Nice smile there from Dunn picking up the first. Anderson, big hole right side. And Anderson plows his way over Furch to the 30-yard line and eight more, maybe nine. When you're averaging over six yards a carry and you're NDSU, there is an assumption that you should and will win every single game you play. And that's where the Bison are right now. Another big chunk, first down run of nine yards as the Bison are inside the 30. Cordy Messingham really mixing up the schemes and the backs. 257 yards rushing. Anderson outside. This time taken down for a loss of a yard. Duncan Furch coming in. So that will set up third in about three. Town crowd obviously knows how big a play this is on third. Anderson the tailback. Stick will throw it. Shepard open, complete to the 25 down to the 24 yard line. And NDSU converts a big third down. Such a huge commitment to try to stop the run. Easy one on one coverage to the outside. Square out against the safety. All kinds of room. Stick waiting for his receiver to make the break and soft coverage, as you mentioned, as the safety. Javon Brecky coming in. Let's take a look at your fun fact brought to you by the North Dakota Soybean Council. In 1941, Henry Ford co-founded the Ford Motor Company, produced an automobile with plastic parts made from soybeans. Did you know that? Weighed less than a metal car. 
Anderson to the outside. Good pursuit by UNI, but Bruce running hard and finally taken down by Cole Larbick after another first down run of 11 yards. On oh, the player that Anderson ran right through is slow getting up. Here's Bruce Anderson. Right here is where he makes the play. Just see how far or fast he gets upfield. That's one of the corners again. Xavier Williams that couldn't hold up to that Bison running attack. NDSU keep moving, keeps moving the ball on the ground. Very physical finish today by the NDSU running backs. The helmet did pop off, so Xavier has to come out for one play. Anderson, 22 rush attempts, 167 yards. Malstrom leads the way, done again. This time tripped up by Roosevelt Lawrence after a gain of about three yards to the 11. One of the few successes the corners have had today. Lawrence made the play up to the 11. Bison defense getting a very important rest on this drive. And NDSU really chewing up the clock. Down to six and a half to go. Stick's going to keep it to the outside. Following a Brock Robbins block, did he get in? No, down at the one foot line. Stick trying to stretch it across the goal line, but picking up the first down, Brock Robbins across the formation to provide the, the block. He's carrying, oh, how he's is in. that not a touchdown? I'll never know. That should be a score. He's in, unless that hip hits the ground before the ball gets there, but Bison have got four cracks from here to try to shove it in. They're going to take a look at it, I think, as they should. I thought he, I thought he was in. Well, we'll see what the replay official thinks, but Brian and I both thought he was in. Mm -hmm. Undisputable visual evidence. Isn't that how they say it, LT? I believe that's how they say it. We might not have that, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, worst case scenario, it'll be NDSU first and goal at the one foot line. Just keep an eye okay. on the knee. Oh. Knee. We can't tell where the ball is, but it is darn close. But is that enough to be undisputed? Eh. I still think he had the touchdown, but I also think it's going to be first and goal. I think so too. Forty third rush attempt of the day for NDSU but just the first for Easton stick a good time to pull that out for Courtney Messingham not show quarterback run all day uh, on that particular play another thing I really like is the way that coach Messingham and the offense disguised where your fullback was it, for the bulk of this drive it was really easy to tell where the ball was going to go he just followed Brock Robbins and here Brock Robbins came across the formation from behind to get in there. First down for North Dakota State. Okay, the first and goal at the half yard line. Meanwhile, a wild one between James Madison and Elon. Elon has just taken the lead over the number two team in the country with a minute left. Wow. Elon ranked number 10. That would be a huge win for that program. Meanwhile here, NDSU trying to pick up a big road win against their rivals. I've run as many quarterback sneaks as it takes to get this yard. Stick, bouncing it outside, getting some help from Dunn, touchdown! Oh, and a flag comes out. I think Williams threw a punch. These corners have been beat up in the run game. And this time Stick goes through one of the corners to grab the touchdown. And that was the perfect on the ground mostly drive at the perfect time of this game. 
Peterson connects again. North Dakota State, a little bit of breathing room. 42-31, your score. 6.03 to go at the Unidome as Easton Stick keeps the feet moving, bounces outside, and runs it in for another rushing touchdown. Camp Peterson, another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Williams hit and dropped by a couple of Bison at the 23. Let's take a look at that last replay on the end of Easton Sticks' run, LT. Easton trying to rip away Williams. He has a touchdown already. Watch this. Now watch the retaliation from nine. A little bit of a slap back. There was no penalty called on that, so they're going to let it go. Looked like Williams kind of held up a little bit <laughs> as he uh, swung forwards. So now you and I, 556, as we take a look at the Bobcats scoring recap. What a drive, 11 plays, 78 yards. As Dunn sets up the screen, Shane is slippery. Wasn't able to stop him after a gain of five. As athletic as Jabril Cox is, that's a tough speed matchup for him. Cox will go right back to the slot guy. That's McShane again. Done to throw. Flushed. McShane makes the reception. Cox quick close. First down to the 30. McShane just runs to the middle and stops between the two linebackers. And, and when he waits to see if it, the ball is coming out on time from his quarterback, when it's not, he makes a little adjustment within the zone, sits down, and makes the catch. Done. Trying to get away, dropped it off to Y. Miller, but Jordheim right there to take him down with some help from Steitel. Gain of a couple. I thought maybe Dunn might have been dancing with the line of scrimmage here when he shuffled this one forward. Completed pass. Jordheim playing in that soft zone on the flat. Covered it up. Dunn just going to throw this one away. And just in, Elon, number 10, has knocked off number two, James Madison, 27 to 24. So South Dakota State, despite the loss last week with a victory over Indiana State tonight, could become your new number two in the FCS. That's assuming NDSU hangs on here. Terrific down the field coverage from the Bison, forcing Dunn to throw that last one out. Nobody was open, not even remotely close to open. Third down, done. James Hendricks, excellent defense. Tapping that away from Briley Moore and fourth down coming up, the offense on the field, and I think they'll stay out there. Boy, Hendricks had a perfect read on the ball. Nodak Insurance Company replay. This will be a real good look at it. He has the ball, he's in proper position, hugging the hip of the defender, not getting on the back early with his backside arm, reaching through, no contact. Great job, James Hendricks. Northern Iowa, fourth and eight. NDSU has not given up a fourth down this season. Bridges corner blitz. Done to McShane, and he overshot him. Incomplete. He was wide open because Jabril Cox slipped down, and McShane, excuse me, uh, uh, the, the quarterback done couldn't get the ball low enough to the short wide receiver. Oh, yeah, you know that Eli Dunn, with both hands on his helmet, goes, I absolutely miss this one. Corner pressure, corner blitz. Would have been a first. Oh, that kills you as a quarterback. You know you had him. He was wide open. Wow. Now the Bison offense comes back out. Credit to NDSU's defense. Only the touchdown given up here in the second half after 24 first half points. Zero in the fourth quarter. Rizal will just run it. Anderson taken down by Sander, but again, a good surge there and a pickup of about six yards. Late in the game last week against the Jackrabbits, what did the Bison offense do? They won the game by staying on the field and running it down and grinding it down and just keeping that clock moving. That's exactly what the Bison will try to do here. Of course, you're on a short field, you want the points, but that clock moving is the biggest thing at this point with a double-digit lead. 
Down to four minutes. UNI does have three timeouts, but again, if UNI can't stop NDSU, it doesn't matter. Uh, they're pointing at, pointing at Luke Bacon, I think. Zach Johnson may be the guy. Bacon also over there, we'll see. Ball start, offense, number 68. Five yard penalty, still be second down. The clock will start on the snap. So that'll take the Bison back five, and we'll stop the clock. Second and ten. Watch 68, bottom of your screen. Yeah, a little flinch. Yeah, they both, they both moved. <laughs> Double wing look a little different. Yeah. Stick's going to keep it again. Working off a block from Nate Jensen. Easton Stick is going to take it to the house. Touchdown. Secure the edge. That's what Jensen did on that play. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Beautiful job by the two tight ends. Elson and Jensen both make the plays. There's no way that you're going to catch back up to stick. He had a full head of uh, steam rolling along the sideline and the Bison roll up their third touchdown in the fourth quarter. All those runs throughout the first three quarters taking their toll on the UNI defense. The Bison 316 rush yards and 495 total today. Buying, building, or refinancing, start with a Gate City Bank Blue Standard free approval. And experience a better home loan. Get started today at GateCity.Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. There are a lot of things to love about the way the Bison offense has played in this game. Not using quarterback run until Really the, to the point to where the Panthers I think may have even forgot about it. And then you know stick is able to get the last two touchdowns rushing the ball. But when your tight ends can win on the edge. Just like especially Jensen but Elson was there too. When your tight ends win on the edge yards will be made every time. That was that was a really 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 nice job by number 85. And you mentioned it LT. You and I have been so concerned trying to stop the running backs that quarterback run is probably not top of mind, but stick so capable of doing that. Well, head coach Chris Kleiman back in his own stomping grounds. He played here, was an all-conference guy. He's all smiles. <laughs> yeah. Fake, yeah. fake hip and everything. And Kleiman's jumping up. McShane calls for the fair catch, 342 to go. Number four, fair this copyrighted broadcast is property of North Dakota State University. Any rebroadcast, reproduction, or distribution without the consent of NDSU is strictly prohibited. Well, one of the members of the coaching staff for you and I who is back as a coach is Bryce Pop, who was also a teammate coach climbing back in the day. Yeah, Pop was here, went to Minnesota for a year, and then came back. Bryce had a better NFL career than Chris did, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, double he had an NFL career. Double digit years. Done. Have to take some shots. More covered by Marlette, incomplete. Well, if a flag was going to come out, I wouldn't argue with it. I think, Mar I think Marlette was there just a hair early. Well, again, Briley Moore, the two big receptions in the first half. Outside of that, he's been taken care of here in the second half. Done. Jalen James, covered by Marquise Bridges. There's John with somebody on the UNI sideline. He caught that right on, right on the stick. The no, nope, it's going to be just shy of the 35. Maybe a half down. yard short. Yeah. Not even a half yard. 
Dom might just get up and run for this. Boy, I don't know if he got it. Nope. Bison got a good surge there. So now fourth and short coming up, and the clock continues to run. Well, the NDSU defense has been out there for quite a few plays today. This will be the 71st play that UNI has run. But the fact that the Bison offense left them on the sideline during that 11 play touchdown drive. And you and I getting ready for that play and NDSU not prepared only 10 players on the field. They ran on a defensive lineman late and will call its first time out. Let's look at Matt Ems. Also spent some time here as a coach. And he's from. He's, he's a native from this Ohio. area. Yep. Well, one thing Matt Entz anticipated he'd see more of today is Wildcat. We have not seen one snap of it today. And that's when Y Miller just takes a direct snap and starts running with it. This would be the first game that the Panthers have not used it. And again, it's usually Y Miller back there that handles those snaps. So fourth and a half yard. McShane in motion. And UNI's got it. First carry of the day for Tyler Hoosman. It's really hard to demonstrate how physical it's been on the interior today. I mean, these two lines on both sides have really grinded hard. Done. Across the middle. Incomplete. Diving effort there by McShane will bring up second down. And NDSU will try to put this one to bed, get home, get healthy, and then go back on the road right away again next weekend to Western Illinois. Where they'll try to game plan for another McShane. Yeah, His McShane. older brother. Not only plays football, but is also a baseball player at Western Illinois. Interestingly enough, both McShanes are cousin to NDSU assistant men's basketball coach Will Veasley. So a lot of connections across the board. Done on the comeback. Good chance, Tyler. Uh, Bridges had that one covered yeah, extraordinarily lay, well. Laying the intended target at a big catch but, earlier in this half. But if Marquise maybe need to needs to stop talking. Cal oh, Tweed is down. Boy, if he's down and if that's a bad injury, that is as big a blow as you can get for this UNI offense. Cal Twait. By far the is, best offensive line. And it's not even close. And Twade has had some injury issues here over the years, and you had talked about it earlier in the broadcast, but this is a guy that visited both NDSU and UNI, came down to those two, ended up sticking with UNI. His dad is a longtime college coach in the area. And Matt Entz had a lot of good things to say about him this week. Boy, and look, I just, from a quick glance of when he was on the ground, it looked like he was trying to favor maybe his left side, left leg somewhere. Yeah, you can tell now that he's up. That's definitely what it is. Oh, I hate to see no no weight at all on that. Cal Twait, he is one of the one of the best offensive linemen in the conference. Yeah, second team All Valley preseason selection as the reigning Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Week, lineman of the week. And again, eight starts last year until injury kind of set in. UNI 208, 55 and 1 all time at the Unidome. Looks like they're going to draft the 208, 56 and 1 after today. And NDSU, if the Bonds can hang on the next 239, will be the fifth straight win in the series between these two programs. But how different of a game today oh, has weird. been compared to the last handful, half a dozen years? They've been low, lower scoring grinders in last year's. Game it was seven seven and a half and the Bison owned the second half. Done across the middle. McShane hauls it in and then lost the ball. Picked up by James Hendricks. He will come to a stop at the 41. And NDSU has put it on ice. Second turnover on Northern Iowa.
Nodak Insurance Company replay. It will come right at you. McShane makes a nice catch, gathers the ball in, and then the ball comes out. Marlette with contact, first contact. Then Hendricks makes a heady play here. Don't get greedy. You have the ball. Get down on it. And he did. Now North Dakota State has not turned the ball over today. Just one turnover last week. So NDSU now plus six on turnover margin this season, which is among the best in the country. And they're just going to take another look to make sure it was a completed pass. But based on what we saw, we saw sure a catch looked, in a football sure move. Sure looked like it. Yep. Now we'll look at it again as you do at home. But the ball does come down to his hip here, but he's got it contained now already. Look at his eyes. He's looking upfield, looking to make a play. Unless you think the nose of that ball going back into his elbow isn't secured enough, but the reason for that was is because Dan Marlette knocked it away. Meanwhile, Dunn has thrown for nearly 400 yards today, 392 on 41 attempts. Panthers offensive line have, has kept him upright much better today than I thought they would be able to, to be honest with you. Uh, he was hit a lot more last year. Just two sacks <laughs> he was, today. He was destroyed last year and the year before when we were here. He got pummeled in that second half. Well, we'll get the official announcement. The ruling on the field has been changed Ooh, to an incomplete oh. pass. Yeah, so fourth much. down, 10 yards to go from the 38-yard line. Nah, the we didn't. is correct, and we'll start on the snap. I thought it was a catch. Whenever my retirement years come, when I'm in those, if, if you ever hear me say, well, for extra pocket change, I'm going to be a replay official. Punch me in the face, <laughs> would you? <laughs> That's a tough job. So there you go. You might have a free shot coming somewhere down the line. So instead we got fourth and ten for you and I. comes on Menard. Here comes Menard chasing him down and he's got another sack. He has taken over now. Third place all time, fourth place all time on the list for NDSU passing Coulter Boyer. Here's career sack number 33. So Greg Menard has no problem with the fact that that last play got overturned. It gives him an opportunity to get done to the turf. And as Brian mentioned, he Keeps climbing up the list, all time sacks. Greg, again, if you're new to Bison football, missed last year, the whole year. He had a serious knee injury in fall camp, tore his ACL, got the surgery, rehabbed, worked out. Now he's a senior, redshirt senior. And they may have given him a half sack as well earlier in the game. He was kind of in on one late, so we'll see if they. Uh... Here to do that and the official stats come out. Here comes Adam Cofield, first carry for him today. Hodgkiss also was the one handing it off. Old Hodgkiss into the game. Nash Jensen as NDSU gets some of their backup players in. Which just given the physical nature of this game and the way it's played out as many times as those big boys have been pounding heads inside. I think it might be good to give those first teamers a little rest here. Well, with just a couple of more yards, NDSU will hit 500 total yards of offense today, which I have never seen in the years against the Northern Iowa team. 319 rushing. Cofield has a room to the outside. Cofield has a touchdown! Exclamation points with 138 to go. Oh, how sweet it is for that unit to pick up a touchdown here late in this game. 55 points now. 
for North Dakota State. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Cofield bounces it, gets a beautiful block by Josh Babich. Again, the tight ends in their blocking today has been stellar. 25 yards, first touchdown run of the season for the sophomore. Another extra point. 56 31. Well, you can put this in the category of surprise for me. No question. Well, it, you score 56 points, and you, it looks like the Bison have had this game in hand. Well, not at all, especially not in the first three quarters. Fourth quarter? Yeah. NDSU domination. But those first three quarters, what a grind. I mean, the Panthers had the lead and had the lead heading into the fourth. Because it was 20, it was 31 to 28 heading into the fourth quarter. Let's go look at the Bobcats recap of the scoring in this game. And you see pretty even until the fourth. And then it was all NDSU. And certainly the Bison take a lot of pride in owning the final 15 minutes, and they did today. But you don't win as many games as NDSU has without being able late in the game to do the things necessary to win those contests. I mean, that's the reason, one of the main reasons, the Bison have won six of the last seven national championships. And the fact that Chris Kleiman as a head coach is going to pick up his 59th win against just six losses. Last week, when did the Bison take over? Fourth quarter. There were some interesting moments to get to this fourth quarter, but once that fourth quarter happened, it has been Bison dominated. Yeah, just the one touchdown given up by the defense. A little pooch kick here on this Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. But you know, uh, last week's game and this week's game by the rest of the conference is really going to be studied and studied hard by trying to determine how did the Jackrabbits and how did you and I uh, have the success that they had prior to the fourth quarters and can we, can we going against NDSU figure some of that stuff out in our playbook. So now Putney goes out to right tackle. And Dunn's out at quarterback if Howell's in there. Hoosman flag comes in. See Matt Vanderslice in as well. These are not the just mop up reps for Howell. Howell has played yeah. uh, you know, a lot in the Montana game. He led the, the comeback to get the Panthers back in that contest after really getting toasted pretty hard in the first half. And then Howell also started against the Hawkeyes and you and I did nothing in that game until the fourth quarter then Dunn came back in and led him to a couple of touchdown yeah, drives 38 to nothing or whatever it was at the time <laughs> and again this is a UNI defense that had not given up a point in nine straight quarters same play again no hold this time Northern Iowa giving up on average 348 yards a game, well above that today. At 523. Now we don't talk about this very much, LT, and we should. This is the 111th win this decade for NDSU, most in college football from any program. The next closest FCS team is Sam Houston State with 88. Then some of those uh, nice wins over Sam Houston State in that run. There's Howell, who's certainly more athletic of the two. Michael Tutsi, Jackson Hankey, okay. all getting in there, along as, with Hayes. As impressive as the 110 wins sounds like in this decade, 13 losses in this decade. That's equally as impressive. Yeah, it is. Hoosman gets some extended reps. Maybe one more play ought to do it.
So you and I will drop to two and three on the season. Just checking the Bison total offense after three quarters, 305 yards, and now 523. So over 200 yards of offense in the fourth quarter. Usman picks up about four more, three more. North Dakota State on the road to Western Illinois. You and I will go on the road to South Dakota next week. Bison continue to get it done. 11 straight wins now for the program. Most in FCS and 5-0 this season. 2-0 in the Valley. 56-31 your final. Lance Dunn. Over 100 yards in his final game in his home area. 104 yards on 17 carries and the touchdown. Also a touchdown reception. A little bit of a touchdown assist on one of Easton Sticks rushing touchdowns. Pop. Chris Kleiman embracing for a quick minute. Bryce Pop's D-line. Not its best day. Let's go to Chris Kleiman and Ryan Gellner. Yeah, guys, it's uh, kind of a funky game here, but boy, when you needed your offense to grind some things out, give you guys a break on defense, you really got it. Yeah, offense played dynamite today. The Rams up front were great. Uh, we ran the ball really well. Easton played well. Uh, we get got into a lot of different formations and, and spread, the, spread those guys out a little bit more than we typically do, and then we opened up some big gaping holes for us. It may get lost a little bit, but I thought your offensive line, your fullbacks, and your tight ends might have played the game of their life today. They were pushing people around. They were dynamite today. You know, we're, I don't know what we, how much we rushed for yards per carry. Son of a gun. We just we knocked them off the football all day long. And credit to Coach Riley, offense staff, great game plan. And, and they did a nice job. They copycatted a lot of things South Dakota State did, had us some problems with. We've got to shore some things up on defense, but it is a win. Over 500 yards of offense, over 300 rushing yards. Really is a nice win for you guys. Really puts you in the driver's seat where you want to be. Yeah, it's just two games. Don't driver's seat me. Uh, like, uh, congrats. On, hey, games. you came home and got a nice win. I know that means a lot. It does. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Guys, back upstairs to you. A happy head coach. Semi-happy. 56-31, <laughs> your final. Head coaches just don't give themselves many opportunities to enjoy, do they? It's always on to the next week. 56-31, your final. We will step aside. And be back with more from here at the Unidome in Cedar Falls, North Dakota State is 5 0. Back here at the Unidome in Cedar Falls, Iowa, North Dakota State winning for the fifth straight time over their rivals. Uh, impressive, impressive <laughs> offensive performance. 56 to 31 is your final. Brian Shaw and Lee Timmerman back with you in LT. It was a high scoring first half both ways. You and I had it going on the ground. NDSU, or you and I had it going in the air. You and I struggled stopping the run all day long. NDSU really piled up the ground game, but overall in that fourth quarter, you really saw that defense wear down from the Panthers. Yeah, it certainly did. I mean, NDSU was just able to continue to grind it out. And I think some of those stomach punches that were happening throughout those first th uh, three quarters that helped open up the outside. And then uh, one of the really neat things I think the, the Bison play callers did today was use stick at the right time. I mean, the, the Panthers, I don't think, just were counting on quarterback run at the stages in which they did mm -hmm. and stick was able to get those into the end zone so they, they used him at the right time and uh, just to follow up on what Ryan was talking with with coach Kleiman he's right uh, fullbacks especially Brock Robbins and the tight ends had a great day today let's take a look at your final stats brought to you by the North Dakota certified seed producers and uh, you know you got to be impressed with what you and I did through the air Eli Dunn by far the best game he's had against NDSU. 
but ultimately the running game was largely abandoned and unsuccessful in the second half. Yeah, there was enough balance in that running game, I thought, in the first three quarters to help support some of the things that Dunn was going on uh, through the air. But uh, the, the fact that you outrush a team by 240 yards, you are supposed to win those games. That's what NDSU did. Time of possession still belongs to you and I. But uh, I would like to know what the time of possession was in that fourth quarter. And uh, after the quick strike, the, the, the long pass play touchdown, Bison get the ball back after the stop and then get a grinder. Get that type of fourth quarter drive that we're used to seeing NDSU successful teams have. They were able to do that and uh, really controlled or took a, took a firm control on the game at that time. And again, the passing yard's not going to jump out at you, but the key passing plays came at critical times in the red zone or in explosive plays. Darius Shepard, a couple of important catches down the seam for touchdowns. Lance Dunn had a touchdown reception as well. Picking on the right people you thought they would be able to be successful against. No knock on the freshman. He just doesn't know what he doesn't know yet, but they were able, that's Brecky I'm talking about, the Bison, especially Shepard and some of those things in the slot, some of the deep posts, they were able to just isolate him, beat him, and score on plays like that through the air. We will step aside one more time, be back with a look at some of your offensive highlights, and there were a lot of them today for NDSU. 56-31 the final. Back here in Cedar Falls at the Unidome, Sheriff Field, NDSU 5-0 with the victory today. Impressive fourth quarter outscoring the Panthers 28-0, racking up almost 350 rushing yards today against the Panther defense. Brian, Sean, Lee, Timmerman, let's take a look at some of our offensive highlights. And from Northern Iowa, off to a really fast start. Before you blinked, it was 14-0 Panthers. <laughs> Boog, right up the slot. You're able to t get your safety napping just a little bit on this play, and there goes the tight end, and just off the right off the bat. And then it becomes a 14-point lead before the Bison got rolling. Bruce Anderson, a good day on the ground. Lance Dunn, over 100 yards as well. Lyman really did a good job of pulling out in space when they needed to, or just pushing guys back. The Shepard takes a big shot and makes the catch. And he was able to do that a lot today. Shepard was able to absorb a hit at the end, and this was a big play that helped the offense because at this particular point, the defense hadn't done much. You're down by, a, you gave up a couple of scores. Bridges is able to help that defensive play, turn into some offense, and then Bruce Anderson and company finishing. A little pass into the flat to Lance Dunn, and the Bison get scoring. Bison backs did a good job of breaking tackles and getting on the edge. Getting to the second and third level. Nice little wrinkle here with the option. Yeah, taking uh, Ricky Neal out of the play, getting done into the end zone. And this was an important play after a third down stop. And Darius Shepard taking it on a hop and returning it deep into UNI territory at the 35. And then Stick back to his money man again. Shepard with a real nice adjustment. The ball thrown to his back shoulder, not out in front of him. That was a really nice catch, and then Anderson is able to uh, once again take advantage of a defensive mismatch, and once that first guy doesn't get him, he's gone. More great blocking on the perimeter. The Bison backs just continue to chew up yardage, chew up the clock, and move the chains. Here's where Stick pulls. Reaches across, almost across. <laughs> but he scores on the next play with that little bit of an assist from Lance Dunn right there. And then Stick again would finish another rushing touchdown, this time a little bit longer to the other side of the field as the Bison roll up again, a 56-point offensive day. Boy, impressive is the only word we can use for it as NDSU uh, continues to roll through the Valley schedule, but it doesn't get any easier going to Western Illinois next week. We'll step aside one more time and be back with your Nodak Insurance Company player of the game and a look at some of your defensive highlights after this timeout. Back to wrap things up here this afternoon from here in Cedar Falls, North Dakota State 5-0, 2-0 in the Valley with an impressive road win, the fifth straight over their rivals from Northern Iowa. Brian Sean and Lee Timmerman with you. And defensively, LT, not a lot of highlights early for North Dakota State. The Bison, I thought, really settled in in the second half, did a nice job of taking some things away that they were giving up. I thought you and I did a really nice job. And it, at first, in that first half, it seemed to me like uh, they were trying to determine where Robbie Grimsley was and then working away from him. And not many times was done hit, but when he was, the Bison were able to make a few plays. That was a, a little bit of a, uh, you know, uh, Rima was open deep. I believe that was Rima anyway, and the Bison were able to, to come up and knock that away. And Dunn 
Didn't have a lot of happy feet in the pocket, but when he did, he's certainly not productive, and then he got hit, hit a few times late in the game. Uh, North Dakota State did a pretty good job of making sure he did not buy too much time in the pockets. And again, when NDSU got ahead, they're able to pin their ears back and get after him a little bit. It's Greg Menard gets the sack late to seal it. And uh, for NDSU, I think defensively, I think Chris Kleiman mentioned to it, some things we got to go back and work on. This isn't us. We found some things that the last couple of opponents have maybe exploited, and that'll give us an opportunity to shore it up here this week. Yeah, and uh, you don't have much time to do it. Uh, this, these guys will be back grinding early tomorrow. They'll get back on the flight tonight. They'll watch this game tonight on the flight back in order to, to try to start working on those things that other teams are doing against NDSU early on. There is no rest. Uh, they'll, the day, meaning the coaching staff, will start on the plane tonight. Let's take a look at some other scores from around the Missouri Valley Football Conference. Illinois State trailing at home to Western Illinois. Again, that's the Bison's next opponent. Kind of Western, a slugfest yep. going on Western Illinois uh, next week down in Macomb. And uh, Missouri State continues to try to get it done with a lead in the third quarter. That's uh, against a USD, a one-point lead. Missouri State, as we've talked about today, and so far I think the surprise team in the conference. And South Dakota will host UNI next Saturday in Vermilion as well. So. It's been uh, pretty wild here so far in the first couple weeks of conference play. Southern Illinois, a loss at home last week to USD. We'll take on Youngstown State tonight on the road, and then Indiana State, after playing UNI last week on Thursday night, will go to SDSU, and that is a 6 p.m. kickoff tonight. It will be very interesting to see if Indiana State has anything for the Jackrabbits. My guess is no. <laughs> Again, that was a team that was <laughs> shut out last Thursday night by UNI and uh, has uh, struggled traditionally in Valley play over the mm -hmm. years. Our NODAC Insurance Company player of the game, a number of guys you could have chosen for this. Certainly Bruce Anderson is going to be 1A of this list, but Easton Stick accounts for six touchdowns, four through the air, two on the ground, uh, over 200 total yards once again, and this guy just continues to make plays when his team needs it. Well, Easton came into this game, uh, I believe, second in the country in yards per completion as we watch him with his rushing touchdowns. But he had nine completions today for 179 yards, which is almost 20 yards again per uh, reception uh, for, the, for the Bison, which is beyond fantastic. Let's go down to Ryan Gellner. Hey guys, Courtney Messingham, the offensive coordinator at North Dakota State. Courtney, over 500 yards of offense, over 300 rushing yards. You guys had it going. It took a little bit, but you had it going. The, the Rams, man, you just got to keep believing in them. And, and, you know, we told them we're not going to go away from it, uh, not going to try to throw it a bunch. You got to keep them off balance with throwing the football, but, but we were going to come in trying to run the football. Easton Stick, the numbers won't stick out, but four passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns. He had a game today. Uh, all he worries about is getting the ball in the end zone and, and figuring out how to give us the best chance to be successful. And when the game's over, I've never heard him one time worry about what his stats are. It's a road win for your football team, and any win in this conference is nice to come by. In the Valley, you better be ready every week, home or away, but, what, but when you're on the road, you've really got to stay together as a group. Congratulations, Courtney. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Guys upstairs well today and not only between the run and pass but the different running schemes so a lot of different looks a lot of misdirection and the bison were able to really capitalize not only on the interior runs but also on the perimeter uh, and i thought he mixed up uh, where he put his tight ends in some of those blocking schemes or we talked about it once on brock robbins how he started on the uh, away side of the formation went back got a nice kick out block which stick was able to get one of those touchdowns so not only do you disguise what you're doing with the guys running the ball but sometimes more importantly you're moving and shifting with the guy Guys blocking for the runners, which gives that defense a little bit different look, and the Bison were successful in that fourth quarter. Well, Robbie Grimsley was a really busy guy today at the safety position, and he is also standing by with Ryan Gellner. Yeah, Brian said uh, you were a busy guy at safety. That might be an understatement today. You guys were busy out there. Uh, yeah, we, I mean, we got a lot of action. They were reading us a lot. Um, basically, their their plays were based off our safety rotation, and, and we could see that. And we were trying to fig we figured it out a little bit late, and I think that's why they got a lot of success on us. And we calmed down a little bit and just uh, got into what we do, and I think that's uh, helped us a lot in the second half. Yeah, you look at the scoreboard, and, and people that didn't see the game go, wow, but you only gave up seven second-half points. Those adjustments at halftime really did work. Yeah, I mean, really, it was just us calming down. There, there was nothing we hadn't seen before. Uh, we just I think we were a little too elevated in the first half and, and trying to do too much and uh, being too cute with it. And I think uh, once we settled down and coaches talked to us about our adjustments and, and we just do what we do and, and locked in on our guys that we were able to handle them. 
I thought the offense did a really nice job. I don't want to say bailing you guys out, but giving you time on the sideline, especially in the second half. They had some long drives where they just ate up clock. Yeah, I mean, that's huge. Uh, it's a team effort, obviously. I mean, but just having them, knowing that they got our backs all the time, and, and, and if we give up one, if we have a rough start, that they're able to go down and get some points. And it helps us, you know, they don't go three and out. We can, we can get adjustments on the sidelines and, and get a breather. And I think that was just a big thing that kept our, uh, our morale up as a team is just we knew we were always in the game. Robbie, anytime you get a win, a road win is nice, but a win in this conference, you'll take them any way you can get them. Oh, absolutely. I mean, 2-0 in the Valley right now, uh, can't ask for much more than that. Robbie, thank you for the time. Have a safe trip back, and uh, we'll do it again next week. Thanks. Appreciate it. Guys, Darius Shepard's on the way, but he's not here quite yet, so I'm going to throw it upstairs to you. I will grab him just as soon as I can. All right. Thanks a lot, Ryan. And I think Rob, sorry, I think it's Rob Grimsley Rob prefers now. to yes. go by now. He's, <laughs> he's elevated to that point. Um, just, just kidding, Robbie. I think Robbie alluded to the fact that they were reading the safeties mm -hmm. and made adjustments. It all worked out well. Darius Shepard is standing by now with Ryan. Guys, Darius Shepard is wish, uh, with us, and Darius, another game where uh, Easton needed a guy to throw it to. It happened to be number 20. Yeah, you know, we just came out today, we faced some adversity, and no matter who it is, we're trying to make plays each week to put us in a position to win the game. So, you know, great job by the O-line holding up and Easton finding, you know, me, me uh, on the certain plays we called. A lot of adversity hasn't happened for this team very much. You guys have dealt with it now two weeks in a row where you got behind, the offense had to get going, so to speak. But uh, it must be a, a pretty positive thought when you can look back on these last two games and say, you know what, we were fine and things turned out okay. Yeah, you know, we prepared for this. We know that everybody's going to give us their best shot each and every week. So we try and come out with the mentality just to play our game. And no matter what the score is, just keep executing and doing our thing and things are going to work out. I don't know if you've seen the stats, over 500 yards of offense, over 300 rushing yards. It maybe didn't feel that good. But uh, some guys did some work, especially in the running game. Right, yeah, no, incredible job by the Rams this week. You know, shout out to those boys, you know, working hard. And it's a good job by the offense and, er and everybody just fighting to get that win. It was, a, it was an incredible job on the road. It is a good win, Shep. We appreciate the time. Thank you. Guys, it's Darius Shepard. Back upstairs to you. All right, thanks. And how about Darius? Five receptions, a career-high 118 yards last week in a victory over South Dakota State. Six receptions, 92 yards, two touchdowns. This week against UNI, he has really turned into the go-to guy. Uh, he's making those tough catches, and uh, he has. Think of Think of the pass to Carson Wentz, uh, you know, from Carson Wentz, uh, you know, late in that game, which was the game-winning touchdown deep in the corner. That was a tough catch. So we've seen it a few years out of number 20 that he's been able to make it when it counts. Coming up next Saturday, we'll pack up the truck and head to Macomb, Illinois. NDSU will take on Western Illinois. It's a night game, 6 o'clock kickoff, pregame at 5 p.m. on October 13th. So stay tuned and join us then. We hope you will as we take a look at our upcoming schedule. We uh, got quite a few games still left on our slate. This will be a road game followed by a home game and then another road game to close out October. Yeah, we're only two games into the uh, Valley Conference, but you take the two teams that would call themselves the rivals with North Dakota State. You played them both. You win both of those games and you have that little tiebreaker edge already over South Dakota State and over UNI. That's a nice little thing to have in your back pocket. Well, it was a lot of fun. We were glad to bring it to you here this afternoon on the KBLI KFYR Bison Television Network. We hope you'll join us next Saturday as NDSU heads down to take on Western Illinois. Fun football game here at the Unidome in Cedar Falls, 56-31 your final. North Dakota State is 5-0. We'll see you next Saturday from Macomb. Have a great one, everybody.